From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the Liberty Media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Why does a U.S. orthodontist make more than some CEOs? You get that dental bill and you'll know. Implants, partial or full bridge, the kids need braces? Fractions of U.S. prices. Balloon angioplasty for heart patients in the U.S. is $50,000. Thailand, under $7,000. Heart bypass, joint and hip replacement, cancer, many procedures under the price of your Obamacare deductible and copay. Don't risk bankruptcy. Hit us up now. We'll show you how at asiarunlikehellguide.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live. Dial in toll-free and bring up whatever you want. The number is 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. What would feminists in the United States have to say about Femin? Because Femin is this interesting group uh, that, you know, they're not necessarily liberty-oriented at all. I just love them because they've got real cur- courage. I mean, they're willing to go out and put themselves and their freedom on the line over what they believe in in a way that— you just don't see in the United States. I mean, I've seen video of feminine activists being taken down by thug, humongous, scary kind of Russian cops. I mean, the stories about what happened to these feminine activists are pretty scary. We were reading stories about them previously where one of them was taken out into the woods by some Russian thug cops at one point and... Uh, what did they do to her? They, um, I've got, they did something awful involving a knife, and uh, I, she she lived through it, but it was a horrifying story. And they've really put up with some serious, scary situations in some pretty scary places to try to, you know, purportedly have more more rights for uh, for women. Well, I think it would depend on what feminist you ask, but I think maybe some of the feminists in America would say that they're objectifying themselves. Well, right. They're using their own breasts as an attention-getting uh, mechanism, and it works. Now, uh, so kudos to them for figuring out how to get some attention for their cause. Unfortunately, in this particular story, where one of the fem or not one of them, but where uh, several feminine activists, 20 of them, were arrested in Paris during a protest of what happened to other uh, another feminine activist, they uh, they were attacked by the police and they're ch- they're being chased down. We're trying to figure out why. Is it just because they're topless in public? So I've actually got a story uh, from Metro News that I'll get to. Hold, yeah, hold that. We're going to get into try because you're actually having to translate. Yes. Uh, this and what's frustrating, I imagine, for the folks in Femin is all of the news headlines about their protest are about how one of the cops took a spill during the chase because the cops are literally running after them these topless women uh in just this ridiculous scene and one of the cops smashes into a wall and that's what all of the english stories are about that i've seen about this incident so i want to know why were the cops chasing them in the first place what you know precipitated uh the preceded the 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 actual chase we'll get into more detail here your calls and thoughts are welcome antiwar.com by the way has the answers about the isis situation they've got the readership but what they don't have is a pot of gold 
The war machine has the magic of the Federal Reserve's printing press and the mainstream media on their side, and all antiwar.com has is you and the facts. The antiwar.com staff is down to a skeleton crew, however, and they're taking minimal pay. They are committed to keeping the website online with the best of the worst of all the bad news out there, but they can't do it for free, and they can't do it without you. They need your donation, so please go to antiwar.com and donate to them at antiwar.com slash donate, plus they proudly and gladly take Bitcoin, antiwar.com slash donate because war is the health of the state. So, um, but it's, it's, I think this, besides the fact that the cop smashes himself into a wall, neat video of that happening, I posted it on our Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. I think this is an interesting story to come out after this viral video of the woman walking around New York City in this group claiming that someone saying good morning on the streets to a pretty lady is somehow harassment. These are people who call themselves feminists. And I think you're right, Ellen, that many people who call themselves feminists would look at femin and would look at their tactics and say that they are objectifying themselves, that how can they demand equal rights for women while turning themselves into this you know, this sexual thing, uh, even though I don't think breasts are sexual, there are people who do think that. No, I uh, mean, just the fact that you have a certain body part doesn't make it explicitly sexual. It's just a part of your body. I agree with you. But unfortunately, the laws in a lot of places don't agree with us, and they have criminalized uh, women being topless, whereas men being topless is completely legal. And I suspect that the reason why women being topless is criminal is because there's enough males who are uh, in po- politics who believe that breasts are sexual. And so in order to repress that uh, sexuality or what they believe that everyone else is the same as them, in order to repress that, they've created laws to prohibit women from from walking around topless. So, you know, this brings up that issue of, well, you know, if you're a feminist, should you be, you know, should being topless be a method that you use to get your me- message out? I imagine feminists would vehemently disagree on this topic. I don't know because, and I, I would say that it's something that they disagree on because there are some feminists that use it as a tactic, and other feminists that would wind up saying, you know, like you shouldn't do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you should find uh, more, doing it more wrong. modest ways. Well, that's what I'd like to hear from. I mean, if there's anybody out there who considers themselves a feminist and you're offended by feminine's tactics, I'd love to hear from you. I think they're brilliant, really. I think that uh, they've gotten all kinds of press for what they've done. I imagine it's a lot of personal difficulty because these women are getting arrested and charged with various different things i mean that's it's it's an expensive process to go through civil disobedience and have to go to court and go to prison or go to jail and you know pay fines and things like that it's it's a real pain to go through all this disobedience just to get some news articles out there to promote right. your uh, your organization yeah and it's probably insulting to them that the only news that uh is in English anyway about this story is the one about the cop running into the wall. Right. No one's talking about the actual reason why they were there. There's a cursory mention of it in the RT story. Oh, yeah, they were there to protest the arrest of a woman who was, you know, arrested for stabbing Putin's wax statue at a museum in in France. Uh, That's all you get. And you don't get the story about what led what led up to these police chasing after these topless women. Is it illegal to be topless in Paris? If so, I'd like to know that because it would be shocking information. So, Daryl, what did you learn, if anything, from the Google translated version of a French article from which website? Uh, I actually have two articles, one from Metro News and one from the French version of Huffington Post. I didn't even know that there was a French version of Huffington Post, but apparently there is. So first, the article from Metro News, it says, Sunday afternoon, about 30 activists protested topless in front of the courthouse in Paris to protest against the charges against two of them for sexual exhibitionism, chanting feminist, not exhibitionist, and not a mm. criminal, the Femin crowd waved placards that read, Naked and free. Okay. A topless man is free, legal and cool. A topless woman is a criminal. And in my France. body is not obscene. All right. All of these in French. Uh, some have also found time to hang the gates of the palace before the police came and removed them. So I'm not sure what it means to hang the gates of the palace. 
uh, hanging on, literally hanging on the gates. Oh, hanging on. Okay. Yep. Uh, again, you know, yep. this is a Google translated version of an article. And then it mentions the two people that had been arrested that they were protesting. The one you had mentioned was uh, Danova Yana, who was convicted or rather was sentenced to a fine of 1500 euro for stabbing a waxed statue of Vladimir Putin. So they literally the are. The charge was sexual degradation and exhibition. Wow. So they there it literally is illegal to be topless in uh, in France. Uh in possibly. The we'll other we'll person with autumn in the air, it's time to think about getting ready for winter. And it's time to save at HerbalHealer.com. You'll find amazing seasonal savings to prepare you for the fight against cold and flu season. Like Oregacillin to promote lung health. 30 capsules regularly $34.95, now only $25. HHA Olive Leaf, the natural antiviral, normally $16.95, now 60 capsules are just $12. HHA Elderberry Power, a great flu and virus fighter, regularly $16.95, 60 capsules, now $10. Save on all our homeopathic detoxes. Choose from lungs, kidney, liver, brain, libido, or whole body, normally $26.95, now just $20. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click on the Fall Winter Specials button to save on all our natural cold and flu fighting products. Also explore our Herbal Healer Academy correspondence courses that teach you how to handle your health naturally. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. Hey guys, Mark Claire here, lionsofliberty.com, where we strive to advance the ideas of liberty daily. We bring you the Morning Roar! That's right, every Monday to Friday we'll have a brand new edition of the Morning Roar, where we provide a roundup of some news stories that you may not find in the mainstream media, or even in your typical social media news feed. We find stories that relate to the ideas of liberty and provide you with our liberty perspective on them. Every Monday, we have our longest-running feature, Mondays with Murray, named after the great libertarian Murray Rothbard, where we'll examine an article or an excerpt from his works and help convey his view, along with our little spin as well. We wrap it all up every Friday with Felony Friday, where our own John Odermatt goes out and takes a look at some sort of felony. There's felonies committed every day, you know, whether it's a felony committed by the police, a politician, or even an average citizen. You can find all of this and so much more over at lionsofliberty.com. Advancing the ideas of liberty daily. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at Forum.LRN.FM. That's Forum.LRN.FM.
This is Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls if you dial in toll-free, 855-450-FREE. More about the Femin topless protests that resulted in 20 arrests. They were already protesting one or two of their ladies. Two. Two of their ladies being arrested for some nonsense. Um, we'll get into more detail on that here in moments. Also, you're welcome to join us here via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Plus, at coffee.freetalklive.com, you can get a free pound of some of the best coffee out there from BuzzBox. Shade-grown, 100% organic, and top 1% grade Arabica. It's great coffee. And BuzzBox does something else that is super special. They and Free Talk Live have teamed up with Kiva, kiva.org, to help change lives by offering people in poverty Poverty and opportunity to change their own lives through microloans. And the way this is working is for every 10 Free Talk Live listeners that signs up and gets on the auto ship program over at coffee.freetalklive.com, then we can fund one new microloan out to some folks and uh, you know help them make a better life for themselves. When that microloan gets paid off, we'll fund that an- we'll fund that same amount of money into another microloan. Uh, so you can help us with that and get great coffee as well. Get your first pound free. Just pay the shipping cost, and you can cancel your subscription anytime. Coffee.freetalklive.com. That's coffee.freetalklive.com. You may also bring up anything that you want, and we'll continue Femin here in a moment. Kenso is on the line first, though, in New Jersey, listening online to LRN.FM. Hello, Kenso. Yeah, hello. Um you know, uh, so a lot of times the uh, the ballot questions for referendums that they have um, have a national implication. I don't know if it's going to affect uh, your state, but um, it was just very strange. I don't know if I'm overacting, but uh, one of the questions that they have is um, they want people to vote on whether to amend the state constitution that gives a right to bail, a specific right to, to get bail if you're... Uh, being held and arrested, and uh, which is more than than what the, um, the, the you know the, the federal constitution um, doesn't really spell it out. Uh, it hasn't really been decided as to what it really means. The only thing it really says is that the, your bail can't be excessive. And some people have taken that to mean that that uh, implies that you have a right to bail, but that's not been decided. But, so um, just to clarify, you're I, saying in New Jersey there's a ballot measure where people will be able to vote on amending the state constitution to create a right to have bail once you are arrested for something? No, no, it's actually the opposite. There already is in the state constitution a specific right to have bail. What they're asking people is whether they should amend it so that they would take that away hmm. so that they would allow uh, judges to uh, hold people in pretrial confinement. So what you're and, saying is, just to be clear, in New Jersey, people have a right to bail, which means that if you are arrested on suspicion of being an axe murderer who has slaughtered uh, you know, 50 people— that you would get bail, like you know, they would set bail at two million dollars, or you know, three million, or three hundred million, or whatever. But they would set some amount of bail, is what you're saying. Um, well, under the state, uh, there is a right to have a bail, and uh, now I, I don't, I can't tell you how they how that's been gotten around. But um, but what's onerous about this, in my view, is that. They're asking people to just eliminate that, you know, that's a clear-cut right, and they want, you know, the people to be able to say, no, we don't want that right anymore. Mm-hmm. And I don't know who's who's behind this uh, move to have this, but— Probably um, the police. It, so the <laughs> actual wording of the question would ask people— if they should allow a court to order pretrial detention of a person in a criminal case. So the way they have it worded here makes it sound as though, you know, like nobody ever stays in jail before in they New go Jersey. to Yeah, that, you know, Seems based on what I'm... I mean, is this your understanding? Yeah, it could take is this... over a year. I'm sorry? It could take it over a year for you to ever go to trial. Sure. And then the trial might last longer than that. So if a person is innocent, uh, well, you know, later found to be innocent, um, they spend all that time in jail, and and they might not even survive the you know being in jail. Oh, I know. It's it's a terrible thing to take somebody's freedom away as they're awaiting trial. So, I mean, I'm not necessarily opposed to the idea of you know guaranteed bail, 
Um, obviously, there are certain circumstances that make people want to allow a judge to have the option to deny bail, like, you know, the crazy axe murderer kind of uh, circumstance. Well, I think they already are doing that. It's just that is that what, what they're really saying is they're, they're saying because there's a specific right to bail in the New Jersey state constitution. And they want to make an amendment. So what you're saying is they are already you, – you know – do you know for a fact that there are people who are denied bail in New Jersey? Oh, yeah. I mean I hear about that all the time. It's so what that, you're saying is they're violating your understanding of their state constitution already, and there's no one calling them on it, but now they just want to legalize that? Uh, well, yeah. Um, you know, the thing is, is that it, I don't know how they're getting, you know, around it. I mean, they're, you know, they just do whatever they want. I mean, that's how they get around it. They just, you know, ignore their rules and do what they want. That's how it happens almost See, everywhere. I don't know if I'm overreacting. And the reason, what, because, I mean, uh, I've talked to the people about this and, and they, you know, they look at it like, oh, yeah, well, you know, you should be able to give the, you know, the judges the latitude to do that. So um, I. I I found an opinion piece here from NJ.com, which is NewJersey.com, and they're actually advocating a vote yes, and they cite a couple of instances here, one of which is someone that was labeled a drug kingpin who was out on bail and killed his witnesses. (laughs) Uh, They also cited... Someone that was involved in a Newark schoolyard murder and someone that was out on bail for raping an eight-year-old and then, while out on bail, killed three college kids. Oh, my. Wow. And they also say that it's generally the poor and nonviolent people who can't afford bail and languish in jail for months before going to trial. So, Kenzo, uh, where do you stand on this? Well, what concerns me is that they're actually asking us to to basically say, no, we don't want to have this protection in our Constitution anymore. And that concerns me. I think that that, like, I mean, it, it makes me, you know, why would anybody ask, you know, for us to, to basically say, oh, no, we don't want this right anymore. Well, oh, I see what he's saying. It's stronger than what the U.S. Constitution, you know, has been deemed to have said. There's nothing that actually says right to bail in the Eighth Amendment. It just talks about having an overly excessive bail. It is pretty right? disturbing. It, it's, it's like funny. they're testing the water to see how uh, how opposed people are to, you know, voting for their own freedoms to be restricted. I suspect they're not very opposed at all. I think this will pass. I think that... Uh, you know, the police will get behind this, and uh, you know, and most of the things the police get behind, lots of people get behind. Yeah, it. and also when you've got the newspapers that are putting out, you know, votes, yes, stories. And here's scary things that happen. Ken, so thanks for the call, man. I appreciate hearing from you. The toll free number is 855 450 free. Uh, that's 855-450-3733. Ken, so seemed bewildered as to why the why, why would someone do this. Well, I mean, these are the people who are in search of power. Uh, they are constantly moving towards consolidation of that power, towards eliminating any semblance of rights you might still have left. I mean, as he already admitted, this isn't in effect. It may be written into their constitution, but apparently it's being ignored. So now they're just trying to legalize the ignoring of that particular provision, which ostensibly guarantees you some level of bail if you get arrested in New Jersey. Uh, so yeah, I think that all they'll have to do is trot out these scary stories and have the police unions endorse this and it'll probably sail through. Right. And you know, what, one thing that I'm a little confused on is, you know, if they do wind up passing this and giving judges a little more leeway, then would the judge be able to let somebody out on personal recognizance, especially these nonviolent people that are sitting in for months because they're poor and can't afford bail. Would you think this would prohibit personal recognizance? Well, it sounds like they're not allowed to do that now. We'll come back with more here. 855 450 free plus uh, more details on the Femin protest. It's Free Talk Live. Geico RV presents Reflections from the Road. I love the great outdoors and saving money. So I made the easy switch to Geico RV insurance. 
which was a whole lot easier than eating my wife's cooking for a week. Rob, I can hear you. Sometimes I think she can read my thoughts. Yeah, you were thinking about Geico RV insurance. Man, she's good. Well, you are saying everything out loud. <sighs> I meant to do an internal monologue. Geico, for your RV, trailer, or camper. See how much you could save. Majid lives in Nord Devin, Armenia, with his wife, kids, and grandkids, all in the same house. They have cows, but to compete against the big ranchers, Majid needed to get a loan for more cattle. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the cows. He bought them, and now he's very happy with the expansion of his farm. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel at any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. The experts at Web.com want to build your business a successful website for free, just like we did for these current Web.com customers. We've used and, and looked at other website designers, but there's nobody better than Web.com. Web.com can build your website in as little as seven days free. Plus, we'll promote it on all the major search engines like Google, Yahoo, and Bing. If after 30 days you're happy, we'll continue to provide promotion, hosting, support, and maintenance, all for one low monthly fee. If not, cancel and pay nothing. If you're in business today and you don't have a web presence, you won't be taken seriously. Call right now and you'll also get a free .com or .net domain name for your new website powered by VeriSign, the world's leading domain name provider. Call 800-297-0154. That's 800-297-0154. No upfront charge for site build, after which ongoing fees apply. Rights to site are relinquished when canceled. Domain included during active service, after which fees apply. That's 800-297-0154. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Kay Oliver is part of the Tweyambe Women's Group in Jinja, Uganda. She gets old clothes, fixes them up, washes them, and then sells them at the Jinja market. She was quite happy with her success at her business, but realized that a sewing machine would really help her make more money to take care of her two kids. Free Talk Live helped her get that sewing machine. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound, try out the subscription, cancel at any time, coffee.freetalklive.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We are here, and we'll take your calls about whatever's on your mind. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you in the studio tonight, you've got Ian here. Alan. And Daryl. And we're in the midst of a confusing issue about New Jersey's court system. A gentleman called in a moment ago saying that there's apparently a ballot measure this year that people will be voting on that will essentially make it so that judges in New Jersey could deny people bail. Apparently, the New Jersey Constitution guarantees someone who's been arrested the right to bail. It says, and, all persons shall, before conviction, be bailable by sufficient sureties. 
which could mean PR bail in that personal recognizance means that, you know, the judge thinks you're going to make it uh, to court. They don't see any real need to load up thousands of dollars of bail on you, so they just let you out. But based on what I'm seeing here and a statistic by the Drug Policy Alliance says that on a typical day in New Jersey, there's approximately 1,500 people that are sitting in county jails because they can't come up with the money to cover bail. Most of those are nonviolent offenders that can't come up with the money for bail. So they're sitting in jail because they've got $2,500 worth of bail that they have to come up with. That sucks. But how is proposing that the judge could deny bail completely I mean, that's, maybe we're misunderstanding. Maybe the proposal isn't what the gentleman who was calling in said it was. I don't know. I, uh, I'm trying to find the actual wording of the question instead of just a half of uh, section of the question. Maybe I'm just loopy and I'm not. Uh, I, mean, I mean, I'm not getting this. I mean, I am a little out of it, having been awake since early this morning and and running Keenvention all day. But, I mean, I'm, are you guys as confused by this as, as I am? I'm super confused. That's why I'm on Ballotpedia and about okay. five other websites so trying to find me. out. It's I don't know. Me. I thought that it was um, it was like universal across all states that uh, it was a right to have bail and not in excess. Well, that's the federal constitution that applies to people that are arrested for federal offenses. If you get arrested in Keene, New Hampshire, then you can't argue, well, the federal constitution says that I can only Mm. be arrested for high crimes and misdemeanors. Gotcha. So we'll try to learn more about this here. Daryl is uh, cracking away on the research. Our toll-free number is 855-453. Maybe you're in New Jersey or you've lived there and you have some experience with the criminal system, uh, the so-called justice system. We would love to hear from you. You can also join us via Skype. Our username there is lrn.fm. I wonder if they uh, offered any bail to these ladies in France. We were talking earlier about the topless protesters who 20 of them were arrested after being uh, at a rally, apparently in front of the palace of just the palace of justice in France, Uh, topless, holding signs, chanting, you know, making noise, that kind of thing. The police at one point chase after the women uh, through the streets, one cop crashing into a wall while holding a shield as he attempted apparently to slam one of these women. He missed. That's what the story is uh, making headlines for. It's not really giving information. So the Huffington Post France article cites something that was posted on Femin's Facebook page. Mm. That says, quote, France is the first and only country in the world which condemns feminine activists for exhibitionism. Mm, Oh, wow. So apparently in France, there's some kind of regulation. It's exhibitionism. Against being topless in public. One of the protests that they did earlier this month, they had a couple of activists on top of the Moulin Rouge which is the famous uh, cabaret, Mm -hmm. the Moulin Rouge cabaret, and they dropped a sign that said, red is the color of the revolution. Hmm. The red revolution. What was illegal? The sign dropping? Well, they were topless on top of the building. I see. And they dropped a sign that said, red is the color of the revolution. And, of course, rouge is French for red. Of all the things that they could... Uh, you know, make illegal in France. Like it's it's legal to get cigarettes and to drink if you're you know too young to do it. Uh, in the United States, but to, in France you can. Is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, you can easily get a hold of those things if you're a have younger you been there? person. I I have been there actually, and um, it's it's quite easy. <laughs> <laughs> they, no. Usually in restaurants, they don't even ask for your identification. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. So, how old were you when you were there? I was seventeen. Was it like some sort of high school trip? Or? Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I went with a group of about 10 people and my French teacher to uh, France, Spain, and Italy. And um, it was it was really nice getting away from my teacher because she didn't want us drinking on the trip, <laughs> but we knew that <laughs> we'd be able to get she away with it. She knew you would, yeah. Yeah. And uh, the one time that we did order alcohol, because, you know, when you're young and you're ordering in public for the first time, it's nerve-wracking. Right. She, she walked by the window of the restaurant the we were sitting did? in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, so, it's, it's, they actually have vending machines for cigarettes, too. Wow, so, they used to have those in the United States once upon a time. So, now, 
Are you saying there's a lower minimum age in France, but it's not really enforced? Uh, yes, I, they're very loose with things like that. Hmm. You know, it's not something that police are looking out for. Hmm. But that's why it's surprising to me, uh, especially since you see on posters and in advertisements, there's all these sexualized women. But these women are just, um, they're not necessarily sexualizing themselves. They're just, you know, saying this is, you know, this is my body and it should be okay for me to do this. And I find it kind of funny that in the video you're playing, Mm -hmm. it's actually blurred out. Like, we're not even okay with looking at it. Well, RT actually, I think at some points in this, doesn't blur the women uh, let's see if I can go on a little bit here. This is the women running through the streets. There's there's a couple dozen of them at least. Um, I don't think they're blowing the, those women there. No, oh, I, can, I can definitely see uh, the nipples on these uh, these women. There were a couple of scenes in which there seemed like there was some blurring going on, and I didn't understand why some of them were blurred while others weren't. That so didn't is it, make any is it the whole breast that's offensive, or is it just the, the nipple? nipple? Yeah, that's a good question. I, if there's anybody out there who would like to explain why they find... <laughs> Uh, breasts to be offensive, uh, please let us know at 855-450 free. At about 23 seconds into the video, there is a frame, uh, a, a scene with uh, what appear to be approximately 10 topless women. The first one, there's blurriness on her breast, but none of the rest of them are blurred. So it's very inconsistent uh, level of blurring. This is definitely, a, I'm, I'm actually surprised YouTube hasn't taken it down uh, for complaints. Is it well, it's, it's a news obviously piece? educational. It's a news piece. Okay. And there's probably artistic merit. So, uh, yeah, I'm shocked by this. I just, I'm really surprised that in France, of all places, it's illegal to be topless. Unless or you're maybe- on one of the beaches that are specifically designated oh, as yes. a topless beach. They have those in France, huh? Yes. Yep. They're all over in Europe. So, okay. So, if the government says you can be topless here, then it's not exhibitionism to do it. But if you're topless in an area where it's not approved, then it's exhibitionism to do it. Is that the idea? Yeah. So, uh, if you walk from so. the beach to the street, would that. You're in trouble. Yeah. Missy. A little <laughs> missy. Um, crazy stuff here. And the feminine activists, again, I don't know even what they, you know, what their protest is all about. Their their messages tends to be fairly feminist. Not that I'm a, a pro, opposed to the basic, what was it, the the lowest level of feminism where people should be equal. I like that idea of feminism. But when you start going into this crazy realm of saying good morning on the streets is tantamount to harassment, which is what the holla back folks were saying about uh, what was going on in New York City with the viral video earlier this week. That crosses a line for me into crazy land. Yeah, I don't think that things that make you feel uncomfortable are necessarily harassment. You know, I think that's more of a personal issue. If somebody can't say good morning to you without you getting offended, then that's right. something you need to work on because people are going to be saying hello and hi, you look nice today all the rest of your life, probably. So what I, you know, a lot of respect for these ladies. They are embracing their bodies and they are of different shapes, uh, by the way, in this video. They're embracing their bodies and they're using them to get a message out, and I don't think that there's anything wrong with that, but I imagine a number of uh, feminists in the United States would be offended by Femin's tactics. You're welcome to comment here, 855-453. Comment on Femin's tactics, uh, the idea of being topless to promote feminism, or you can comment on the crackdown on these ladies. I mean, should, should it be illegal to be topless in public as a woman? It is in a lot of places here in the United States, So Paris apparently is the only place where Femin is active. Remember the statement earlier was that Paris or France was the only country in which it was illegal for Femin activists to be topless, if if I recall. I forget which one of you said that. Yeah, uh, was a quote on their Facebook page that said France is the first and only country to charge them with exhibitionism for their topless protests. So, I mean, obviously they would be charged with something like that in many places in the United States, but Femin doesn't exist here. Uh, it told, and I don't know if they have the, the ballsy ladies like this. I mean, these ladies are some of the most courageous activists in the world. You can be topless anywhere in the U.S. as long as it's for art and protest. Really? They might try to charge you, but it'll get thrown out in court. Anywhere, huh? All right, more coming up here. It's Free Talk Live. Daryl's not a lawyer. <laughs> Pop quiz, kid. You know what's at 3221 Highway 22? The new Dickinson Granger branch. You know what was there before that? Who cares? There's a Granger branch there now. Granger's got everything we need from inventory management to safety services and solutions. They even have this handy mobile app for easy browsing 
on the go. Let's head over there and stock up. There's nothing I love more than a new Granger branch, kid, including you. Get it? Got it? Good. Call clickgranger.com slash oil and gas or stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Talk radio generally and Free Talk Live specifically are a really inexpensive way to reach customers. All advertising is about return on investment. If you keep your investment low, you have a better chance of seeing a proper return. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations and the internet, reaching hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, Mark, at freetalklive.com. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at fff at fff.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's fff at fff.org. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, October 31st, 2014. Silver is trading at $16.52 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,202 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $347. Antiwar.com reports a U.S. drone strike leveled a home in the village of Nargasi in South Waziristan, killing six people within, including one who officials identified as a Haqqani network leader. None of the other slain have been identified specifically, though Pakistani officials labeled the rest as militants, including four foreigners. Two were said to be from Saudi Arabia. The attack is the 16th U.S. drone strike against Pakistan's tribal area this year, and while Pakistani officials were previously mobbed on the latest increases in the strikes, the foreign ministry yesterday offered a criticism, pointing out that the Pakistani military is already taking actions against the militants in those agencies. Tasneem Aslam, the spokeswoman for the foreign ministry, said that the attacks were unnecessary and needed to be stopped, which is still well short of the demands to end such attacks which Pakistani officials were making at the start of the year. Still, that comments are being made at all suggests that they are once again aware of the risk unrest allowing the U.S to continue the wildly unpopular drone campaign. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts & Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760 Reuters reports Ukraine, Russia, and the European Union signed a deal on Thursday that will see Moscow resume vital supplies of gas to its ex-Soviet neighbor over the winter in return for payments funded in part by Kiev's Western creditors. After several failed rounds of talks in recent weeks as conflict rumbles on, despite a ceasefire with rebels in eastern Ukraine, the accord also eases concerns that the new gas war could disrupt winter supplies if energy to EU states, notably through pipelines shut down across Ukraine since June. EU Energy Commissioner Gunther Oettinger said he saw in the agreement a first glimmer of detente between Moscow and Kiev in a conflict that has plunged east-west relations into a chill not seen since the Cold War. Worth $4.6 billion in total, the package calls for Ukraine to pay $3.1 billion by the end of the year to cover debts for previous supplies from Russia's Gazprom, and Kiev will have $1.5 billion 
dollars, some from existing accords with the EU and IMF, to pay for about 4 billion cubic meters of new gas until March, for which Russia is insisting on the cash up front. You can support FPP Radio by shopping online. Whether you're looking for t-shirts, precious metals, bitcoins, or books, you'll find that and more at shop.fppradio.com. Every purchase you make from one of my affiliates at shop.fppradio.com helps fund FPP Radio. That's shop.fppradio.com. The Associated Press reports a prisoner whose confession helped free a death row inmate in a case that was instrumental in ending capital punishment in Illinois was released on Thursday after he recanted and a prosecutor said there was powerful evidence that the other man was responsible. Our story Simon's confession gained international attention in 1999 largely because of an investigation by a journalism professor and a team of students from Northwestern University that helped secure Anthony Porter's release just just days before he was to be executed. He had spent 16 years on death row for slayings he and his supporters maintained he did not commit. Because of constitutional protections against double jeopardy, there is no legal way to retry Porter. Simon, wearing a gray hoodie and jeans, told reporters outside Jacksonville Correctional Center that he was angry. He was crying as he told reporters, I'm not angry at the system, I'm angry at the people who did what they did to me. He said that his mother died while he was behind bars. Bars. Simon was convicted and sentenced to 37 years in prison, but the state attorney's office for Cook County began re-examining his conviction last year after his attorney presented evidence that he had been threatened with the death penalty and coerced into confessing with promises that he would get an early release and share in the profits from books and movie deals. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. This is the Onion Week in Review. Apparently oblivious of the dismal fiscal climate, local dog Digby is wolfing down kibble as if the United States isn't in a goddamn economic crisis. Sources say the shockingly selfish four-year-old German Shepherd appears callously unswayed by the constant stream of gloomy market forecasts and continues gorging on brand-name pet foods, milk bones, and table scraps as if the U.S. unemployment rate hasn't been above 8% for the past three years. Here we are tightening our belts while this dog starves on bowl after bowl like the Dow Jones Industrial Average has gone through the goddamn roof or something. you think that he'd think twice since U.S. credit rating's been downgraded, but Digby doesn't give a damn. Ain't that right, Digby? You don't give a flying f do you? The Onion solemnly bids farewell to the 22 crew members who perished during the production of today's Week in Review. You will be missed. For more, visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. As we roll into the second hour of the program, I am Ian. Ellen. And Daryl. And I gotta say, I'm a little bit loopy right now. It's been a long day uh, at Keenvention, which is where, Daryl, you and I have spent uh, the entire day since bright and early this morning. With the exception of lunch. This is true. We broke away for a delicious lunch at the local uh, buffet or restaurant. In and town. a nap. A nap would be nice, but no, no, I'm afraid. Uh, Supper would be nice. Yep, I've uh, I've had nerds for my supper so far tonight, given and that they it's are Halloween. Delicious. Yeah, well, it's uh, the closest thing coming to any sort of nutrition uh, that I'll have. <laughs> uh, there was apparently a delicious VIP dinner uh, tonight had by a number of the attendees to the event. Keenvention uh, is going on all weekend, and if you're in New England, it's not too late for you to come up and join us. Uh, Saturday and Sunday, we have full days of uh, activities, speeches, and panel discussions today. Uh, if you didn't make it today, you missed out on some great panel discussions that we had. The new movers panel was a real hit uh, today. The cop block panel, the ladies panel, and the legislative panel all uh, happened today. And uh, Carla Garrick, the president of the Free State Project, was our keynote speech. You know, during her Q&A, which she actually renamed the Ask Me Anything, Yeah, uh, seeing her and Chris Cantwell go back and forth was a little entertaining you, you like that huh <laughs> I, I thought it was a little entertaining it definitely i i would say that it uh was out of place 
Chris seemed like but he was, it was entertaining. Yeah, Chris seemed like he was badgering a bit, and he should have stopped uh, as he was making points to allow her to respond. And right, that, that it didn't go over well. I don't thought. I didn't think uh, it was all recorded. So if you missed a moment of it, don't worry. I'll get them all out. All the videos will be coming out uh, within the next two, three months, something like that. So I'll release them in order of their uh, chronological order. And that way you'll get to see what happened at Keenvention, even if you couldn't make it. But it's not too late. You can come out and you can buy a daily pass and come out tomorrow. And we're going to be premiering the 101 Reasons to Move to New Hampshire. There's a new movie that's coming out. We're premiering a a, a sort of a preview cut of the film. We're going to get about 15 to 20 minutes of the movie tomorrow. And it's going to ultimately be about an hour-long production. It's the first time that's going to be shown publicly. So there's a lot going on at Keenvention. In fact, folks are about to head out to do some cop blocking tonight here on Halloween night in Keene, which should be a, a proved to be an eventful night for those who are uh, uh, taking part in that cop blocking. If you want to learn more about cop block, you can go to copblock.org there. Uh, there's also folks hanging out at a, a social bonfire event this evening. And, uh, of course, as I mentioned, the VIP dinner. There's a whole list of uh, act- activities and the schedule and everything's all up over at Keenvention. Dot info. It's been a lot of fun thus far in this, the second year of Keenvention. Last hour, we were talking about being topless. And I was shocked to find out that it is apparently illegal in Paris, France, of all places. Some place that, you know, most Americans would associate with being okay with someone being topless. But. Especially since in the Louvre, which is uh, the, most, the world's most famous art museum, at least that's what I think. There's plenty of uh, statues in there of topless women. That's art. That's not exhibitionism, according to the law. Right. See, the feminine activists were charged with exhibitionism, ostensibly for being topless in the streets. Not only were they charged with exhibitionism, they were also attacked by the police. The police came after them in a very violent manner, in, including uh, one cop who missed his target and sort of hurt himself a little bit in, the, in that process. But it seemed like a lot of violence for uh, a gaggle of topless women. I mean, what was the big deal here? Who cares if some topless people run down the streets holding signs? I mean, it's... <laughs> it would be quite a spectacle. It, I mean, I, I would go see what they were, you know, up to. That would, you know, that would be quite a crowd drawer. So, Daryl, you, you made the legal claim. Now, you're not an attorney. I am not an attorney, uh, but... It's possible you could be wrong on this. It, it is. And an attorney could be wrong, too, because attorneys right. just give uh, you their opinion. Right, because all the time you have two attorneys arguing back and forth, right. and the judge agrees with one of them. And he's also an attorney. Uh, but what I have seen is that every time that a topless law in anywhere in the U.S. has been challenged, mm-hmm. it has been thrown out as long as the person making the challenge was arguing either art or protest. So according to the site gotopless.org, they have a handy map which does show that most of the country is green on their map. And the green-colored states are those where top freedom is in effect. Orange-colored states have ambiguous laws, state laws on the matter. And red-colored states are the ones in which the mere showing of the female breast in public is illegal according to state law. Uh, so the majority of the states are top free. Some cities in those states have passed unconstitutional ordinances that annul the state's top free statute. Uh, and interestingly, our very own Keene, New Hampshire, is on this somewhat short list of cities that are officially topless tested, meaning that ladies have gone topless in these places. Some have been arrested, and as happened in our very own Keene, they released the young lady that was going topless. And apologized for the arrest. Yeah, and that's very rare. Not that they Super dropped rare. the charges, but that they apologized for making the arrest. So rare, I can probably count the amount of apologies I've seen from the police on one hand. You can on probably count that number on one finger. Two. I can count two. Uh, there was one time where, uh, where... Okay, so use the knuckles. Like, one, two. Good point. Uh, Cass- Cassidy Nicosia was arrested for being topless here in Keene, New Hampshire, several years ago. And strangely, she's sort of recanted her uh, her activism in that uh, that case after the fact. Uh, but at that time, it was great activism, and it still stands as uh, as great activism. Um, she was apologized to by the police. Another instance was Rich Paul being apologized to by the police for harassing him for open carrying a a weapon. 
uh, into the city building. He was on the second floor of the city building at the time. They uh, they had had the court in that building, and court security were were giving him a hard time over open carrying when he was there not to go to court, but to you know do some sort of city business. I forget what what his purpose was there, um, and so he you know he hadn't passed through the security checkpoint yet at the court, so therefore it wasn't illegal for him to have it. The police did apologize to him in that case. Yeah, and it should be noted that in New Hampshire, there's actually a state statute or it might actually be in the uh, state constitution about uh, not being able to deny anyone access to city buildings so like when they put up that checkpoint inside town hall or city hall here in Keene, Mm. that was arguably unconstitutional because you had to go through that to go anywhere other than the city clerk's office or the revenue office. But no one ever called him on it or challenged No one ever them. challenged okay, it. Okay, so when they issue an apology, is it the police officer that arrested you, or is it the judge who's like, okay, we're issuing a statement saying, we apologize? It was the, uh, the, the police lieutenant in the case of the topless lady who apologized, and I think it was the officer in charge in that particular case. And then in the case of the court, I believe it was the officer who apologized. There, there was an officer called to the scene, and he apologized sort of on the behalf of uh, Keene Police that Rich was ha- hassled in the first place. So just, to, just so you know, the three red states here on this map, according to gotopless.org, Utah, Indiana, and Tennessee. So, Daryl, are you saying that if someone were to go topless in those three states and be charged with violating the state statute, that if they appealed to the Supreme Court of the United States, that they would likely win the case? I don't think the U.S. Supreme Court would take the case, but the federal district court would certainly rule in their favor. On what basis? In my opinion. Why wouldn't this, Why wouldn't the state have the supposed state's right to ban women from being topless? Uh, the same reason that in a lot of places, federal courts rule that states don't have the right to do a large number of things, and that's a broad interpretation of the 14th Amendment. I just think it's very sad that we're still at the point in society where we have to ban people from uh, not wearing clothing because we're afraid of how other people are going to respond to it. Well, you know, wait. like, you can't control yourself. Well, yeah, I guess that's the suggestion, is that if women were were walking around topless, men just wouldn't be able to stop themselves from raping or something <laughs> nope. ridiculous like that. And some of the topless laws are written in a way to actually outlaw breastfeeding. This is true, and that's a whole other uh, separate movement. There's more coming up here, 855-450-FREE. Uh, that's the toll-free number, 855-450-3733. We've got Skype as well. Skype username's lrn.fm. You can share how you feel. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Kay Oliver is part of the Toyambe Women's Group in Jinja, Uganda. She gets old clothes, fixes them up, washes them, and then sells them at the Jinja market. She was quite happy with her success at her business, but realized that a sewing machine would really help her make more money to take care of her two kids. Free Talk Live helped her get that sewing machine. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound, try out the subscription, cancel at any time, coffee.freetalklive.com. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a 
powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm Hey, it's Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want. All you have to do is dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Hey, join us online over at freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that are waiting for you there. If you like privacy, then you need to know about ProXPN. It's a global virtual private network, and they encrypt your online data, meaning that you're protected from snooping people like your internet service provider, they're probably saving your web history. They're probably saving your search history. Maybe saving that information for up to five years in some cases. But not if it's encrypted. And that's what you can get by going to proxpn.com FTL. You get it for Windows, Mac, iOS uh, devices, Android devices. Just download their app and get started. Linux users, you can do it too. It's just a little bit of a different setup process there. ProXPN.com slash FTL. When you upgrade to their premium account from their free account, you get unlimited bandwidth, which is good to have. Servers around the world that you can connect to. You can privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites. So go to ProXPN.com slash FTL to get started. And when you're ready to upgrade, use our discount codes to save big. FTL 50 will save you 50% from the price of the annual account. That breaks it down to about 5 bucks a month. And that FTL 50 code gets you that savings for the lifetime of the account. Plus, you can save even more if you pay with Bitcoin and use code FTLBTC. That's FTL like Free Talk Live in the number 50 or BTC, and you'll say big on privacy. That is priceless. Oh, by the way, there's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee, so you've got nothing to lose but your privacy. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Go there, get started tonight. That's ProXPN.com slash FTL. We're talking about topless equality here, and there are some places in the United States where um, there, it's it's illegal by state law. Other states, according to gotopless.org, uh, the orange states on their chart there, uh, on their graphic, they say their laws are ambiguous. 
So you would be likely the test case if you decided to go topless as a female in those states and get yourself arrested for it. Uh, and I, I would just suggest if you're planning on doing this as some form of art or protest, contact the local ACLU before beforehand. you decide to do it just to make sure that somebody's going to have your back. So weird. The uh, code gotopless.org site. I know I've we've talked about them before. Yes. Uh, because when you go down to the bottom of the page, things get a little weird. Uh, down at the bottom right, it says, Recommended reading. Read for yourself the message for humanity that was given to Rail during his UFO encounters of 1973. Oh, the Raelians. Yeah. And then the, they're a, the people that claim to have cloned a human several years ago, but they have not yet produced the human. <laughs> Oh really? I thought I thought it was uh, still illegal, or at least um, you know they, they did it somewhere outside of the U.S. No, Wait, you I know cloning was illegal. No, or? I know that there's been animals that have been cloned. Mm -hmm. uh, they can clone, you know, pretty much anything. There was a a sheep that was made famous for being cloned. Dolly, I remember. I remember yes, that. Dolly. Uh, that was what, like seven years ago or something. It was quite a while ago. Yeah, uh, but I thought that it was there were still restrictions placed on like the sanctity of life. And you're not so like it's still restricted to clone a human, at well, least as far go, as I know. If you go 12 miles off the coast of any country in the world, try getting a laboratory then, out there. It's pretty difficult. Right. It, it would be pretty difficult, but then you're in international waters where Google no laws it. apply. If you had enough money, you could totally build a laboratory out yeah. there in international waters. Um, cloning, yeah, that's another issue. We actually haven't talked about those, uh, we haven't talked about cloning for a long time here on Free Talk Live. I don't know where the current state of affairs is with the whole cloning technology thing. I haven't seen any stories about it uh, in recent times. Nor that have I. That doesn't mean it hasn't been happening or there hasn't been uh, stories about it. I just haven't seen them. So if you want to comment on the cloning discussion, you're certainly welcome to do so. But, Daryl, you're saying that it's legal. Your opinion, your legal opinion as a non-attorney, uh, is that it is legal across the United States, or should be legal for someone to be topless, uh, especially as a female, though there are state laws that prohibit it. You believe that anyone who went topless in those states with a proper legal representation would be victorious in court after going to the federal level. Yes. Now, and why not bottomless? What about full nudity? Nobody's Full allowed nudity. to do that. No, that's right. Well, they, they, there have been people that have, you know, successfully fought off arrest for being full nude because it was for either art or political protest. Well, in some places it's legal, like Vermont. Uh, most of Vermont it's legal. Some cities have outlawed nudity there. Um, but so in let, let me places, just read. They they have a two question uh, Q and A on this gotopless dot org. Mm -hmm. And one of the questions is, can I be arrested for going topless in a topless-tested city? It says, even if a top-free law is firmly in effect, police can still arrest you under the pretense of disorderly conduct. Uh-huh. Well, they can always arrest somebody for disorderly right. conduct. So people always ask me, you know, can the cops do fill in the blank? And I say, they can do whatever the F they want to. Right. It's whether it holds up in court. Well, in a lot of places, full nudity is banned, as I understand it, on the basis that uh, it is illegal to display one's genitals under any circumstance whatsoever. And obviously, this comes from the sort of Puritan past in the United States, uh, this very restrictive sexuality of you know, prohibition upon any sort of body parts like that being shown. Right. And I, I've actually read the criminal codes of several states because, you know, like That's I'm a do. nerd and yeah. it's what I do. And in Alabama, the way they have indecent exposure defined, it is technically illegal to show genitals to your girlfriend if you are <laughs> about to have sex with her. <laughs> so because you have to do it's it in the dark. <laughs> it's written in a way that says uh, exposure of one's genitals for the purposes of sexual arousal shall be illegal to show to anyone not your spouse. Okay, so wow. even it's, if it's like in your own house. Apparently. In your own house to your girlfriend. Right. It's illegal. If it's dark, you're okay, though. Okay, well, don't think well, about going to the It depends on how you and, define uh, exposure. Not bringing clothes with you. Sorry, what was that, Ellen? So I guess you can't like go take a shower and then... You know, not bring clothes with you because then you, you'll have to walk out of the bathroom naked. But is that for sexual purposes, though? Right. 
It, it specifically oh, says for, for the purposes for the purpo- of sexual arousal. Okay, well, how are you going to define that, and who's going to... Who's going to know? It's just such yeah. a, I, I don't know, one so of crazy a myriad and of, ambiguous. Yeah, one of a myriad of laws that is virtually unenforceable. Right. I suppose a police officer could charge his wife with that or something like that. Right, so, you know, like, somebody's not going to wind up getting arrested for, you know, like, fooling around with their girlfriend, but the way they have it written, you know, it's so broad to where, you know, like, some weird guy with a trench coat just flashing himself <laughs> definitely is, you know, in violation of the law. Right, but I'm pretty sure nobody's going to call the cops on a woman if she's, like, walking in on her boyfriend and she's, like, totally naked for the purpose of arousal. Is he going to be like, okay, well, that's just too far. I- if he has read all the all of the laws and says every law needs to be enforced, then he is obligated to call the cops. All right, so we'll come back with uh, more here. Your thoughts are welcome. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That is the Pro XPN toll-free line, 855-450-3733. Coming up, a IRS crackdown. Daryl has a story on uh, one lady who had a small business. She had a small business. She was just doing her business, and all of a sudden, goodbye bank account. We'll tell you what happened. 855 450 free. Maybe you want to share your IRS hell story. It's Free Talk Live. Are you ready to surrender your right to buy body armor? No joke. Congress is now trying to outlaw civilian body armor. And if House Bill H.R. 5344 becomes law, you can kiss your right to protect yourself against rifle bullets goodbye. Don't put off your body armor purchase any longer. Go now to InfidelBodyArmor.com. Thousands of military veterans trust their lives to Infidel Body Armor. You should too. Spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L. Infidel Body Armor. Just won't quit. This winter, next to water and food, you need a safe, storable fuel supply for your preparedness needs. Spare fuel is the answer. Unlike gasoline, spare fuel can be safely stored with your other supplies for many years and works in any gas-powered vehicle or backup generator. With the bitterly cold temperatures predicted for this winter, now is the best time to stock up on spare fuel. So go to GetSpareFuel.com. That's GetSpareFuel.com. GetSpareFuel.com. Keenvention is coming up October 31st through November 2nd. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, attend social events like the costume party. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, James Robin Hood Cleveland, Rich Paul, and Free State Project President Carla Garrick will be keynoting. And we'll have all kinds of panels, including the new Cop Block panel and the new Movers panel hosted by the outlaw Josie Wales. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. If you're looking for work, it's a process of elimination, and you're trying not to be eliminated. So here's a tip for making the cut, and this might seem subtle, but to the person interviewing you, it's not. There is a world of difference between applicants who convey, I need a job, and those who simply ooze, I want 
to work, especially in these lean times when many you're competing with will seem desperate in I'll take anything mode. If you convey specific interest in this job at this company, you will be conspicuous. Thus, the value of going to school on the company you're applying to before the interview. With money and attention so tight now, effective communication skills have never been more important. For more tips for job seekers and everyone else, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls here about whatever's on your mind. If you dial in toll-free, the number is 855-450-FREE. An IRS crackdown on a business lady, just a small business owner, will tell you what happened to her, because it could happen to you. 855-450-FREE is the number. Join us online at freetalklive.com. And is privacy dead? Well, not if you have anything to say about it. On November 7th and 8th, coders, privacy specialists... And idea people of all stripes will join together for Hack the Trackers. It's a transparency and privacy hackathon brought to you by Ghostery. You can enter online or join them in person in New York City to create tools that make the web a more transparent place or help users manage how much data they share. The hacks will be judged by experts and voted on by an online community, and winners will receive a prize package, including the all-new Black Phone, a secure-by-design smartphone for people who recognize a need for privacy and want a simple, secure place to start. you got nothing to lose. Participation is free. Registration is open now. Visit hackthetrackers.com for more information. That's hackthetrackers.com. So, still to come here tonight, uh, Ellen has a story about the Pirate Bay co-founder being sentenced to prison. We'll tell you about that. Maybe you don't know what the Pirate Bay is. We'll give that an explanation for you, too. Uh, But, Daryl, you've got a story that's pretty disturbing that could apply to a lot of people listening to the show. You own your own business? Maybe you want to start your own business? Well, what happened to this lady, and where was she? So, this story is out of Arnold's Park, Iowa a town that I have never heard of until reading this story. And it's about a lady by the name of Carol Henders, who for nearly 40 years has dished out Mexican specialties at her modest cash-only restaurant. For just as long, she has deposited the earnings at a small bank branch just a block away. That is, until last year when two agents from the IRS knocked on her door and informed her that they had seized her money, nearly $33,000. The IRS has not accused Ms. Henders of money laundering or cheating on her taxes. In fact, she has not been charged with any crime. Instead, the money was seized solely because she had done something that I'm guessing every one of our listeners has done, made a cash deposit of less than $10,000, which they viewed as an attempt to avoid triggering a requirement for (laughs) government reports when you deposit more More than than $10,000. But I do that all the time. I make bank deposits of less than $1,000. Cash deposits? um, Money launderer? Tax evader? This is so crazy (laughs) because... the. What you're talking about is what is called a cash transaction report or a CTR in right. the business. And uh, they are supposed to be issued by the bank. So if you go into the bank and you give them $10,000 in cash, then they have to fill out a cash transaction yes. report about you and submit that to the Treasury for review. Now, uh, the idea there was to supposedly crack down on money launderers, but they also have what they call a suspicious activity report, or the SAR. Now, the suspicious activity report might be filed on you if you came in and deposited $9,999 and then did the same thing an ex- you know, a week later, or if you came in and deposited $5,000 one day, $5,000 the next day, $5,000. You know, there's different parameters right. on what... The banks are supposed to consider a suspicious activity report, so I suspect the bank was involved in filing some sort of a report on this lady, because otherwise I don't imagine it would have come to their attention. Okay, but if she's been doing this for, what, 30-odd years? 40 years, nearly. 40 40 years, and uh, she owns the little restaurant down on the corner, 
And uh, I'm sure if the bank is just around the corner, the people who work at the bank probably know her personally. Which is why it's disturbing, and I I would like to know more about the story. This is a small town, by the way. Uh, Arnold's Park, Iowa, population of the in the year 2000 was 1,162. So this is a very small town. Yeah. So the article here says, Miss Henders said in a recent interview, how can this happen? Who takes your money before they prove that you've done anything wrong with it? Well, the answer is the federal government. Using a law designed to catch drug traffickers, racketeers, and terrorists by tracking their cash, the U.S. government has gone after run-of-the-mill business owners and wage earners without so much as an allegation that they have committed a serious crime. The Mm. government can and will take your money without ever filing a criminal complaint, and the owners are left to prove that they are innocent. Right. Good luck. Good luck with that one. Many people give up and settle the case for a portion of their money. David Smith, a former federal prosecutor who is now a forfeiture expert and lawyer in Virginia, says they're going after people who are not really criminals. They're middle class citizens who have never had any trouble with the law. Sure. And this lady's running a business that's so small to where she's not going to be able to afford an attorney, likely. If they take your entire money, you know, all the money in your bank account, how the hell are you going to hire an attorney who's going to be able to help you with this? Now, I suppose some attorney could step up uh, pro bono and take the case, and I hope that they do. Late last week, in response to questions from the New York Times, the IRS announced that they would curtail the practice focusing instead on cases where the money is believed to have been acquired illegally or seizure is deemed Ridiculous. justified by exceptional circumstances. That's a lie. They're just lying. I Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're just going to go after anybody who has a decent chunk of cash in the bank. The chief of criminal investigation at the IRS, Richard Weber, said in a written statement, quote, This policy update will ensure that criminal investigation continues to focus our limited investigative resources on identifying and investigating violations within our jurisdiction that closely aligns to the CI mission mm. and key priorities, adding that making deposits under $10,000 to evade reporting requirements called structuring is still a crime whether the money is from legal or illegal sources. The new policy will not affect seizures that have already occurred. So do you think this has something to do with trying to get rid of cash in itself and just having to, uh, you know, report or record every transaction? Like, I, uh, you know, people use debit cards and credit cards all the time. And, um, you know, those can be easily traced. Right. Um, okay, so I understand there is a certain movement out there that is advocating for getting rid of cash, and there's also people who uh, are in sort of the conspiracy realm who believe that this is a, a plan that's being implemented uh, worldwide, etc. However, in the case of uh, bank reports, as I understand it, there are also suspicious activity reports that should be written for suspicious check activity as well. So if or, or instrument, monetary instruments. Who uses checks? Yeah, <laughs> some people every now and then. I'm going to be actually cutting a check to the movie theater tomorrow uh, because we're doing a, a double feature screening of some Liberty Films here in uh, in Keene, New Hampshire. I, I cash convention. one check per month. It's an old monetary system, but it's still out there and still being used. Probably a lot of elderly folks uh, would write checks and things like that. But not just checks, but any monetary instrument. Right. Uh, so a money order or something like that, or you know, getting a cashier's check or whatever. There are certain rules on that, Ellen, and and I may be wrong on my recollection, but the last time I looked into it, the low the the amount was lower actually. So you can deposit nine thousand dollars into a bank account once, and it shouldn't trigger any kind of uh, reporting. But there's also reporting that is triggered, I believe, on checks over $3,000. I could be wrong about that. If you work for a bank, uh, please give us a call at 855-450-FREE and, and give us the, uh, the skinny. Th- there's uh, some sort of thing that was added into the Affordable Care Act to where you know, if you do more than $600 worth of business with somebody during a year, you're supposed to give them a 1099 and... This and that and uh, yeah. all these other weird sort of reporting requirements. Right, which is why uh, PayPal is now doing more IRS reporting. So the article here continues. It says the IRS 
is one of several federal agencies that pursue such cases and then refer them to the Justice Department. The Justice Department does not track the total number of cases pursued, the amount of money seized, or how many of the cases were related to other crimes. Toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And this poor lady was blindsided. She had no idea. She's shocked. She's like, what? How could this? What? I didn't and, do anything wrong. There's more on okay. this. We'll get into it here in moments. Your calls and thoughts are welcome. This could happen to you. Well, you believe them, they're going to stop, right? Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Hi, everyone. I'm Chuck Woolery. After putting a few thousand couples together on Love Connection, you know that nothing kills romance faster than bad breath. Smart Mouth gets at the cause of bad breath without the burn, and you get clean breath for about 12 hours. Other mouthwashes only prevent bad breath for about an hour. Gum and mints, well, they just cover it up. Use Smart Mouth in the morning for great breath all day. Rinse in the evening for clean, kissable breath all night. You can even wake up without morning breath. Smart Mouth, for 12 hours of real clean breath, look for the green box at your favorite store. With autumn in the air, it's time to think about getting ready for winter. And it's time to save at HerbalHealer.com. You'll find amazing seasonal savings to prepare you for the fight against cold and flu season. Like Oregacillin to promote lung health. 30 capsules, regularly $34.95, now only $25. HHA Olive Leaf, the natural antiviral, normally $16.95, now 60 capsules are just $12. HHA Elderberry Power, a great flu and virus fighter, regularly $16.95, 60 capsules, now $10. Save on all our homeopathic detoxes. Choose from lungs, kidney, liver, brain, libido, or whole body, normally $26.95, now just $20. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click on the Fall Winter Specials button to save on all our natural cold and flu fighting products. Also explore our Herbal Healer Academy correspondence courses that teach you how to handle your health naturally. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. Free Talk Live. The town wants him to stop, so he's charged with a misdemeanor and could spend six months in jail. 71 years old. Nice folks blind. there. He's Wouldn't let blind. That's his source of blind living. Blind old man sells some firewood out of his front yard. Nice. So now you're looking at having to go out, get a firewood permit, which is going to cost you X amount of dollars a year, and who knows how much research to try and yep. you know figure out how to get the permit. Just then doing whatever they can to stop industry. Yeah, then you have to go and get uh, get your education so you can actually run the saw, and then you have to get a variance on your property so you can actually sell the firewood from your property. Oh, and don't forget, if you have a storefront, then you have to pay, what, five, six, seven hundred $700 a month in rent, maybe $4,000 a month in rent, depending on what city you have an live occupational in. license, too. Aggression like this by these government people happens all across the country and you have to ask how much more are you willing to put up with before you finally say no free talk live seven nights a week from seven to ten eastern live on the liberty radio network at lrn.fm if you want to know the latest about free talk live before we go on the air all you need to decide is how you want it delivered it's your choice visit news.freetalklive.com you can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. It 
It's Free Talk Live. Dial in toll free here, 855 450 free. That is until you can't pay your phone bill anymore because your bank account's been emptied by the IRS. That's what happened to one small business owner, and she's just the latest example of this. There's all kinds of stories about people who've been blindsided where she's just going about her business. She's been doing for 40 years of operating a, a Mexican restaurant, was it? Mexican restaurant. A small town in Iowa. Uh, there's like a thousand people that live in this town. And uh, she was going about her business, making deposits in her bank account. And the IRS decided to take all of the $33,000 in her bank account and accuse her essentially of being a drug dealer. Uh, because, well, if you are depositing money less than $10,000 in your bank account on a semi-regular basis, then you must be a drug dealer because, you know, you know about the money laundering laws, which prohibit the, well, they don't prohibit, but they uh, create a report on anyone who deposits more than ten thousand right. dollars. But well, also, what were those Mexican delicacies that she was selling? I mean, was it was it churros? purely a, was it a restaurant or was it just a cover for something more sinister? That's what they're getting Crank. at here. That's what they're getting at here. Now they have no and they have no uh, actual evidence of any. And drug they've not dealing. charged her with anything. No, no. Normally, what they do is they charge the money, which is right. a bizarre thing. I don't know if you have ever seen this, Ellen, where they actually create a court case against thirty three thousand dollars. Uh yeah, I have. I've I've seen them uh, go against other objects yeah. as well. Like uh, vehicles, houses, Bizarre. you name it. I just that's it's so that's so legal land crazy. But uh, it's even hard to fathom. What's that. even more bizarre, and I feel that this needs repeated, is that the Justice Department does not track the total number of cases, the amount of money, or how many of the cases were related to actual crimes. Of these seizures you're talking about? Yeah, for the civil asset forfeitures. How convenient for them. So they can just pull in tens of thousands of millions of dollars or whatever, and then you know there's no, no accountability whatsoever for this. So the Institute for Justice, which is a group that does amazing work, do in work. my opinion, yeah. they have tried getting information, or actually they've uh, tried getting, you know, these laws repealed and reformed, and they've analyzed structuring data from the IRS, mm. which has made 639 seizures just in the year 2012, which was wow. up from 114 in the year 2005. So Only wait, the, one hope... in five were prosecuted with criminal cases. So against what they said, their numbers are increasing. They're not trying to curtail this practice. Well, now they're saying now they're going to curtail it. Now, now they're going to get Oh, okay. Now, well, finally, finally, they're going to get their act together. Okay, but the the you people who them, right? they took the property from, they're never going to be compensated. No, their lives no. are forever ruined. That's correct. The practice has swept up dairy farmers in Maryland, an army sergeant in Virginia who was saving money to put his children through college. And Miss Henders, who is 67 years old, who has had to borrow money, strain her credit cards, wow. and take out a second mortgage to keep the restaurant afloat. Oh, wow. You know, I, I, I'm starting to feel like uh, burying your money in the backyard is safer than keeping it in a bank account. Yeah, anything that's in a bank account is at risk. I mean, if um, even if you think you're following the law, that's the thing. That's the, that's why this was such a shock to her. I mean, the quote from her earlier in the article is just, she's just bewildered that this could happen. I mean, she thought she was doing everything by the book. She's probably paying taxes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, she's been in business for 40 years. Odds are good she's paying taxes. Uh, she seems to consider herself a law-abiding individual, and that's why she's shocked at this. She doesn't know what cash transaction reports are and suspicious activity reports. She has no idea what the levels of deposit are, and it's probably the case that her business is at a level at which her regular bank deposit puts her in the $9,000 range or something like that, and she's hitting these deposits on a regular enough basis to where it triggered some sort of a report. I don't know if the bank filled it out or if there's some sort of software that automatically fills it out for the bank. Because as you pointed out, Ellen, this is a small town bank. I mean, they we live in Keene, New Hampshire, population 25,000. And the people at the bank know who I am, you know, when I go in there. And they certainly have more business likely at that branch than uh, than this town of a thousand people. That There's more info in this article here. It says that... 
you know, the money, of course, was seized under civil asset forfeiture, which allows law enforcement agents to take property they suspect of being tied to a crime, even if there are no criminal charges. The law enforcement agency then gets to keep a portion of what is forfeited. Owners who are caught up in structuring cases often can't afford to fight. The median amount seized by the IRS, meaning that half is above, half is below, $34,000, according to the Institute for Justice. The legal costs generally are in the $20,000 range, which means that you're spending as much to get back than as what they took. So, you know, you're at a net loss either way, pretty much. Under the Bank Secrecy Act, banks and other financial institutions must report cash deposits greater than $10,000. But since many criminals are aware of the requirement, banks are also supposed to report any suspicious (laughs) transaction, including deposit patterns below $10,000. So it's not just illegal to deposit. Well, I guess it's not illegal. It's suspicious if you deposit $10,000 or more, but it's also suspicious if if it's below that number. (laughs) On a consistent... So, like, if every day I deposit $7,500... That's right. That's going to be suspicious. That's right. Uh, Last year, banks filed more than 700,000 suspicious activity reports, which are reviewed viewed by over 100 multi-agency task forces. There is nothing illegal about depositing less than $10,000 if done specifically to evade the reporting requirement, but often a mere bank statement is enough for investigators to obtain a seizure warrant. In one Long Island case, the police submitted almost a year's worth of daily deposits by a business ranging from $5,500 to $9,900. The officer wrote in his warrant affidavit that based on his training and experience, the pattern, quote, is consistent with structuring. The government then seized $447,000 from the business, which was a cash-intensive candy and cigarette distributor that has been run by one man, or rather one family, for 27 years. So crazy. I mean, there's, yeah, okay, it meets the definition of structuring, but that doesn't mean that they're selling drugs. It right. doesn't mean anything. It just means that it's less than $10,000, right. and that's they're, a crime? They're not even looking into the, the legitimate uh, origin of where this money's coming from. No, they don't care. They don't have to. They can just file one of these forfeitures, take the cash, and then you'll never get, you'll never see it again in your life. Unless you can afford the twenty grand to hire the attorney. Miss Henders said that she did not know about the reporting requirement, and that for decades she had been doing. She thought decades. she had been doing everyone a favor, saying, "Quote: My mom told me that if you keep deposits under ten thousand dollars, the bank avoids paperwork." Yeah. I didn't actually think it had anything to do with the IRS. Wow. wow. So you know, her she, mom probably worked for a bank or something. Right. Like she that. thought she was just saving the bank. Some paperwork. Because she likes the people that work there and they've got, you know, right. relationships. So instead of, you know, like holding on to money and depositing every week, she'd deposit it every couple of days or something. Yeah, this could totally happen to you. And any amount of money in your bank account is subject to being taken for whatever reason they want. And maybe it's not structuring or whatever. Maybe they just don't like you and they want to target you or they, you know, you filed some sort of paperwork wrong with the IRS. Because if you botch up their paperwork, they'll come after you criminally. Yeah. And they will take they will take every dollar in your bank account. That's why you need two bank accounts. Well, that's not going to help you, I don't think, because all of your bank accounts are tied to your Social Security number. Uh, Maybe, you know, at some wonderful point in the past, you didn't need a Social Security number to open a bank account. Maybe that was within our lifetimes. I don't really know. Uh, I remember when I was a kid being able to open a bank account without the Social Security number. It was part of the USA Patriot Act where they started requiring Social Security numbers because... Something, something, money laundering to terrorist. If you, if anybody knows of a bank where you can actually open an account without a social security number, I'd love to hear about it. But somehow they've they've got some way, Ellen, of finding your your accounts. They'll they they've got some sort of magic. Well, you computer. can have one in the bank and one in your backyard. That's an option, certainly. <laughs> and Bitcoin is also an option as well. Uh, gold and silver can be found with a metal detector, but uh, Bitcoin. Can't be found uh, by a metal detector. Here's another story that they have in here where it talks about the Army sergeant 
that was saving money for his daughter's college. Mm. Uh, tisk tisk. He first started saving the money in his basement, then put it in a safe deposit box. The money all came from his paychecks. He asked the bank when he decided to deposit, asked the bank, and the bank teller said, do it in less than $10,000 deposits. And, oh, my God. And then one of them. And then the government a- sees $66,000. Uh-huh. 855 450 free. More coming up here. You can take control. It's free talk live. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Talk radio generally and Free Talk Live specifically are a really inexpensive way to reach customers. All advertising is about return on investment. If you keep your investment low, you have a better chance of seeing a proper return. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations and the internet, reaching hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Lil Drums. Every bit as fun as a full-size Nestle drumstick cone and definitely cuter. Visit us at drumstick.com. Vacations are all about family time, but you don't have to leave home to have fun. Take one weekend a month and devote it to family activities. Pull out the board games and puzzles, serve up some treats, or have a picnic. Even without leaving home, you'll feel like you've really had some time away. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, October 31st, 2014. Happy Halloween. Gold is trading around $1,201, silver at $16.59, and Bitcoin trading around $344. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. In the news, a federal judge has ruled that a couple may pursue their lawsuit against a California police officer who killed their dog during a police visit to their home. Erica Gregory and Lauren Molner say that an officer was sent to their home to speak about an ongoing fraud investigation. Officer Chase Calhoun stated that when he entered the couple's yard and walked toward the front door, he saw their two dogs coming towards him and believed he was going to be attacked. The officer fired two rounds and killed one of the dogs. A prisoner whose confession helped free a death row inmate in a case that was instrumental to ending capital punishment in Illinois was released Thursday after he recanted. And a prosecutor said there was powerful evidence that the other man was responsible. All story Simon's confession gained international attention in 1999, largely due to an investigation by a journalism professor and a team of students from Northwestern University that helped secure Anthony Porter's release just days before he was to be executed. He had spent 16 years on death row for slangs that he and his supporters maintained he did not commit. The Madison Water Utility Board affirmed its support for keeping fluoride in the city's water supply Tuesday night, approving a slightly tweaked policy after a review process. The board endorsed the policy in a 4-1 to vote, according to spokeswoman Amy Barillo. After a lengthy public comment period that included supporters and opponents of fluoridation, they moved ahead with that endorsement. 
Madison has had fluoride in its water since 1948. A June report by Public Health Madison in Dane County said fluoridation helps promote oral health by preventing tooth decay, especially among poor residents. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Margie Wildcraft's Grow Your Own Groceries, homegrown food on every table. That's growyourowngroceries.org. Support also comes from Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, October 31st, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelibertybeat. On Wednesday, prosecutors charged a Baltimore police officer with assault and perjury after the officer was caught on camera beating someone and lying about it. Officer Vincent E. Cosum Jr. was seen on a surveillance camera attacking Colin Truss at a bus stop. Cosum originally lied and said Truss assaulted him and he defended himself. The video proved the officer was lying and all charges against Truss were dropped. Cosum was charged with perjury for providing a false statement as well as second-degree assault. The verdict comes as the Department of Justice has announced they are launching an investigation into brutality from the BPD. Ride-sharing service Lyft has stated that the company will leave Houston if a recently passed ordinance. Ride-sharing service Lyft has stated that the company will leave Houston, Texas if a recently passed ordinance does not change. The company is opposed to the ordinance's requirements for fingerprinting drivers, government drug tests, medical exams, and other inconvenient in-person processes. A statement from Lyft called the City of Houston's licensing scheme onerous and incompatible with our peer-to-peer model. The ordinance was passed in an attempt to legalize ride-sharing services such as Uber and Lyft. Instead, the ride-sharing companies feel as if they're being forced to operate under a licensing system similar to taxis. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Sovereign Living, a podcast, blog, and reality show about what it takes to live a voluntary and natural life. Check out the blog at SovereignLiving.com and watch episode one of the soon-to-be-released reality show at SovereignLiving.tv. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, October 31st, 2014. We hope you have a very safe and happy Halloween. Check out the website at TheLibertyBeat.com. I'm Brian Hagen reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. A prison reform group issued a disturbing new study this week calling conditions in women's correctional facilities deplorably unsexy. The report contends that women's prisons are bleak, dangerous environments with shockingly few soapy showers and erotically charged pillow fights. According to the Prison Justice Initiative, quote, it's a shame that in today's society we still have jails that don't encourage kittenish girl-on-girl -girl exploration. Prison shouldn't be a hotbed of gang violence and drugs. It should be a steamy Shangri-La where caged nymphets discover the sexuality away from the leering eyes of male society. The investigation revealed living conditions that many are calling cruel and degrading, but not in a fun or kinky way. The study's author argues that incarceration should be about more than just punishment. The purpose of prison isn't just to lock people in a box and forget about them. It's to provide opportunities for naughty girls to play nice with each other. Next up, a team of jock scientists have reportedly thrown the cure for asthma onto the roof of the lab. We'll talk to the nerds struggling to retrieve it. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial toll-free here and bring up anything you want. The number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Lots to talk about here tonight. We've been talking about uh, ladies' topless equality. Uh, that was earlier. Also, the IRS cracking down on a business lady after 40 years of no problems whatsoever. All of a sudden, the IRS swoops in and seizes her the contents of her bank account. She had to mortgage her business and do another a number of other things that were very desperate. Maxed out the credit cards. Yeah, desperate financial moves just to keep the business afloat. How the hell is she going to have the money to hire an attorney? Did she bring an attorney on? Was it uh, IJ? Did IJ take her case, did you say? Uh, the article doesn't say whether they did or not. It just sort of transitioned from talking about her mm. to talking about the Institute for Justice 
and some of the statistics that they have because the Department of Justice doesn't keep any. You know, it would be great if IJ could take uh, a bunch of cases, but there's a lot of cases they have to turn down uh, just because they only have so many attorneys and there's way too many people getting screwed over in this system. I right. Mean, We've had cases here in uh, in New Hampshire that I thought would have been appropriate for IJ, and sometimes you can't even get a call back. You know? There have been cases that I've thought would have been great for the New Hampshire Civil Liberties Union. But again, because you know limited resources, limited funds, mm-hmm. and limited personnel, they have to you know, respectfully decline. So, and uh, our rights are trampled all in the meantime. With you in the studio tonight, by the way, here on Free Talk Live, it's Ian. Ellen. And Daryl. Uh, so, we'll, of course, take your calls about anything. We've got some other court-related news here tonight. In fact, Ellen, uh, you've got a story about an international court case of the Pirate Bay co-founder being sentenced to, was it 40 years in prison? Oh, no, that's an overstatement. Oh, really? <laughs> it's 42 I'm 42 thought... months. Oh, okay. I thought you said 40 years. Okay, so it's a little bit better than four, 40 months. Still, 40 months is three years uh, plus three, three plus years. Of Almost three and a three half. Three and a half years, yeah. I don't know what the good time rules are. Where is this? Uh, Finland? Uh, where, Denmark, Denmark, actually, okay. yes. Uh, this is posted on uh, Reuters.com. Uh, Pirate Bay co-founder sentenced to 42 months in jail in wow. Denmark. Yep. Tell um, me more. His name is Gottfried Svartholm. War- Svartholm, Varg. I think. I, I'm not sure how to pronounce it correctly. I know I just butchered it, but I'm sure I'll, I'll just call him Gottfried. <laughs> All right. A co-founder of the Swedish file-sharing website, The Pirate Bay, was sentenced on Friday to three and a half years in prison in what the prosecutors called Denmark's biggest ever hacking case. Gottfried Varg, 30, also known under his hacker alias Anakata, was found guilty of hacking into the mainframe of IT provider CSC in Denmark, accessing the Danish civil registration system and local police's criminal register in 2012. Hmm. When, sentenc- when sentencing, the court of uh, Frederiksberg in Copenhagen said the attack was systematic, intensive, and took place over a long period of time. It said in a news release on Friday, significant amount of highly sensitive personal information had been downloaded in the hacking campaign. See, what would his uh, intention be in getting this information That's what is I'd what like I'm wondering. Um, I don't think it says anything about that in the article. So if either of you would uh, you know, have any idea about that, I'd be interested to know. Hmm. Uh, Varg's accomplice, a 21-year-old Dane who successfully applied for his name not to be made public, was sentenced to six months in prison for complicit for complicity com, complicity. That's what it. Okay, yes. I thought there was another syllable there. <laughs> in a hacking attempt made by Varg in February 2012, but walked free from the court as he had already served 17 months in pre-trial detention. Hmm. The Pirate Bay, launched in 2003, 2003, provides links to music and movie files stored on other users' computers. Swedish subsidiaries of of prominent music and film companies had taken the company to court claiming damages for lost revenue. So, of course, people already dislike uh, the Pirate Bay because it, you know, it's a copyright infringement, according to most people. But he's not going to prison for his operation of the Pirate Bay. According no. to Wired.com's version of this story, he'd actually already been imprisoned for his operation of the Pirate Bay. Svartholm was, that's how you, in my opinion, how you pronounce his last name, Gottfried Svartholm, was uh, previously convicted in 2009 on separate charges for operating the file-sharing service where pirated movies and other material were traded. He was sentenced to just one year in prison in that case and had completed that sentence when these separate hacking charges arose. Now, I'm not real sure what CSC exactly is, some sort of U.S. technology firm that was partially acquitted. Well, let's see. He was partially acquitted of other hacking charges in Sweden, but he was found guilty of hacking into these CSC servers, some sort of U.S. technology company. So what is CSC? And for what reason would this guy be interested in hacking their service? Well, this article from Reuters also says that he accessed the Danish civil registration system and local police criminal registers. 
So he may have been, you know, just trying to find info on the government employees. Yeah, I don't know. That's uh, it's interesting that they've, uh, you know, they've they busted him for that uh, after the fact, and uh, that he only spent a year in prison on the uh, the Pirate Bay thing. I would say it's it's kind of good news that he only did a year's time for being the operator of the Pirate Bay. That's certainly more preferable than what may happen to Ross Ulbricht, the man who's been accused of running a different website, the Silk Road. Uh, which is, of course, where you can go uh, to purchase all manner of illegal drugs and uh, fake IDs and things like that. Uh, Ross Ulbricht is looking at the rest of his life pretty much in prison. Right. Uh, I'm guessing that it's a lighter sentence, or it was a lighter sentence, just because it has to do with copyright laws and not so much physical items. Uh, But the article goes on to say... Varg has been in pretrial detention in Denmark since November 2013 when he mm. was extradited from Sweden after serving a jail sentence there. Oh man. In Sweden. He never got out. Never got out of the clutches. <laughs> no. Varg has been or Varg has been convicted for copyright theft due to his involvement in the Pirate Bay and separately for hacking the mainframe of IT consulting firm Logica, which did work for the Swedish government and a bank. Mm. Just a bank. It doesn't specify which. War- Varg was Arrested in Cambodia in 2012 and was extradited to Sweden to face the charges there. Oh, yeah, I remember that story. Mm. It's terrible. Uh, I mean, I, look, I don't think that, uh, yeah, it's true that hacking into a private server is a private property violation. There's no doubt about that. But is this company working with the feds? You know, They're they- actually working with the Danish government, yeah. according to Newsweek. They, yeah. you know. Uh, offer the hosting for some Danish government agencies. Yeah, so in, in that case, you know, if you're talking about monkey wrenching the state, I don't have a problem with it. I don't, uh, it doesn't bother me if somebody hacks into a state server, you know, if they, they do some sort of meddling uh, that could pro- cause problems with the state's databases and things like that. The state's going to take that real seriously, obviously, and they're going to punish you pretty uh, pretty heavily in certain cases. And- yeah, and it doesn't even say here in the article the IT consulting firm Logica was working working for the Swedish government. So uh, it's, it's clear, I, I guess it was public knowledge that this firm was working for the government. So, I don't know. How do you yeah. guys feel about this? I mean, should he be going to prison for this? I don't know. This is kind of a rocky ground to stand on, you know, because... What's the damage? There, There is no damage necessarily, but I know, like, if I have personal information stored on a mm-hmm. database, I don't want people reading that unless, you know, I've given them permission to access that. Whereas, it's, it's just hard because the government takes this information without asking permission. So who really owns this information now well and based on and i'm not sure what the danish copyright laws or you know the uh swedish copyright laws are but i know in the u.s anything that is created by a government is not copyrightable so you know they can't get him on some sort of you know copyright sort of thing for copying files on the other hand though uh, daryl they, they could get him for like unauthorized access to the files right i mean it's true that maybe you're right about the copyright what you said that they can't copyright things but they can enforce their logos like if you take uh, like a government logo and start using it on your own paperwork then they'll get upset are you searching for your soulmate someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the nsa Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. 
Adam Miller here with Midas Resources. Today is October 29th, 2014. Gold opened at 1223.40. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1268.34, 634.17 for a half ounce, or 317.09 for a quarter ounce. That's 1268.34, 634.17, and 317.09. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase, and there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explained this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. I am a non-attorney spokesperson. Attention men who've taken Androgel or any other testosterone therapy products. Androgel or other low-T products have been linked to heart attack, stroke, pulmonary embolism, deep vein thrombosis, even death. Scientific studies indicate that the use of testosterone therapy products may double a man's risk of heart attack. If you or a loved one took Androgel or a testosterone therapy product and suffered from a heart attack, stroke, pulmonary embolism, deep vein thrombosis, or any other cardiac event, you might be entitled to financial compensation. You have rights, and you need to let us fight for your rights. And you pay no fees unless we win. So call the Tort Attorneys right now. 800-708-7917. 800-708-7917. 800-708-7917. Cases may be referred to participating law firms in your jurisdiction. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Dial toll-free and bring up whatever you like. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. More crazy court news. Might as well stay on that topic here since there's all kinds of nuts things happening out there in the so-called justice system. Joining you in the studio tonight, you've got Ian here. Alan. And Daryl. And don't forget, you can join us online over at freetalklive.com and uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what the readers of freedomsphoenix.com get every day. Readers of freedomsphoenix.com are constantly provided the detailed real news that lies between the lines of propaganda and the relationship we have with coercive governments. Freedomsphoenix.com offers up-to-the-minute updates on the economy, technology, communications, and the rise of the police state. Go to freedomsphoenix.com and sign up for their free daily dispatch. That's freedomsphoenix.com. Coming up, another disturbing story. We talked about the pirate, uh, not the pirate, but yeah, the pirate bay founder uh, who is now going back to prison. Actually, he's never really left prison. He was getting out after initial what he thought was going to be getting out after being sentenced to a year in prison for operating the Pirate Bay. How did he make it to Cambodia then? Because he was arrested in Cambodia. Yeah, initially he uh, was hiding out in Cambodia. Then he was taken to court on running the Pirate Bay, sentenced to a year apparently for running the Pirate Bay, and then get asked before he got out, like as he was thinking he was going to get out, apparently they then transferred him over to Denmark, was it? Where uh, he's yeah, faced- uh, Sweden. Where he's now faced further charges and has now been sentenced to four more years, basically three or four more years in prison. 
for hacking some sort of security agency in the United States, a private company that apparently contracts with uh, governments. Not sure exactly what they do for them, but that's uh, the detail that we have. Now, in a related story, another infamous website, The Silk Road, I mentioned this a little while back. We never got to the story, and I think it's really important to follow the Ross Ulbricht story as closely as we can. It's a very important case. Ross Ulbricht is the man who has been charged, one of the men, who has been charged with running The Silk Road. The Silk Road is an underground website. It is available on Tor, which is an anonymizing system uh, for the Internet. Some would allege that Tor is uh, not good at what it does, but others would point out that you know thousands of drugs are for sale right now on the Silk Road, and uh, they are being bought and sold every single day in fairly large quantity, and those people are doing it safely. However, the operators of the site were taken down last year uh, when the FBI investigated. They ostensibly found the location of the, the server, which is supposed to be a secret, and uh, we still don't know exactly how they went about doing that, but there's some suggestion that there was some kind of bug on the front page of the website that they exploited. The EFF has a lot of info on this, and from what I've read about it, the tactic that the feds admitted to using would be considered hacking if you or I did it. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Where you repeatedly put in a bad username and password. Mm-hmm. And hit enter, and somehow after a while it will ping the uh, location. It'll give you the uh, IP address. Yeah, apparently there was some sort of leak on the front page of the website. That's and the allegation. So the <laughs> FBI admitting to repeatedly putting in usernames and passwords, but saying that none of the info that we put in was false. Well, they're also making the claim, in, in my understanding, when they were responding to the motion to dismiss in the Ulbricht case, were essentially saying that, well, you know, it's another country and he won't admit right. that it's his server, so there's no protection for it. Right. The Fourth Amendment doesn't apply because he didn't admit guilt for the Fourth Amendment to apply. And because it was in Iceland or something like that. The server, the right, actual right. physical location. Yeah, they're, they're, the they're doing all of these weird trickerations, which leads me to believe that if I say that I have a privacy interest of every inch of the internet, regardless of its location, does that protect me from <laughs> any sort of thing to where I yeah. wind up getting a charge? I suspect it wouldn't. Probably um, not. But there's an update in this case from the Daily Dot. We'll get into that here in moments. We've got James in Arizona. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, James. Minister Perry. Oh, pretty loud there, James. Can you back off from your phone just a little bit? Uh, Minister Perry, I'll try to speak softly then. I'm a big fanatic of your uh, two-hour-long monologue every Sunday. I listen to it whenever I can. And I'm thinking that because you're uh, you moved to the New Hampshire to save the world, I'm thinking that's why you don't take phone calls. But no, maybe that's just me. No, I, I at the beginning of the show I did take phone calls, but then there were people that were calling in that didn't want to have actual conversations, so I just just decided to stop answering the phone when it rings because it's kind okay. of hard to it's hard to you know screen a phone call. And do the show and make sure that, you know, commercials are lined up and other things. You do run a one-man show. I mean, just so you know, J uh, sure. Daryl does okay. a show called Peace, Love, Liberty Radio on Sundays on LRN.FM. And you have no producer. Right. Uh, there's you and the automation system. Uh, so if you were to take phone calls and screen them, you'd have to do it during the breaks. And usually you're doing other things. Right. That's what I'm hooting. and. Um, but some shows don't take calls. I mean, that's just the way they go. Right. Not, a, not every talk show is a call-in show. Well, that was a very long answer, so may I attempt to engage in dialogue with you three uh, uh, about a certain how you've turned this Orwellian animal farm commandment, no animal should wear clothes on its head, literally. I mean, uh, Orwell kind of predicted the de-evolution de of man. What are you talking so like, about? Like the, well, d about Ellen, I'd, I just want to start off then, if I may, to clear things up. Ellen, my mom and my sister and all the women I know in this world don't think you have a right to walk around town without your shirt on because it's uh, they're not progressive. And they don't think that uh, they think that the difference between man and animals is that we must wear clothes when we go out in public, including women with a, you know, that have breasts. 
Well, I'm pretty no, sure that's not what separates humans from animals. Like, clothing does not really? grant people magical abilities to be intelligent. I, I mean, that's magical what separates that's what separates humans from animals is our intellect and our well, ability I, I to live in a peaceful state and not have to fight each other all the time. I'm not talking about fighting, Ellen. That's another conversation. But again, are you well, familiar with if, the no animals shall wear clothes and how I uh, somebody James in Arizona? Yes, I, I remember reading that book in high school. Your favorite. I know not only James but in Arizona, Ellen, but hundreds of millions of your fellow Americans think that you should wear a shirt when you go out Hundreds of millions of Americans yes. think That's women right. should have tops on. Well, you know Where what? You I, get your I can do whatever I'd like Freeman. to do, and I'm not hurting anybody else by okay. doing it. Not to say that I would ever really? do that, but yes, I'm serious. I'm not let me going you, out let and me axe ask murdering L. anyone. Let me Perry a question then along those lines, because I know Ian Freeman that you're sitting with has also suggested that nobody should have to wear clothes in public he's actually said that would be his dream come true in liberdopia where you guys all dream of one of these days being a a, a, a wonderful utopia where men don't have to wear are you going to ask a so, question or are you going to ramble yes i'm not rambling i'm commenting and i'm going to ask a question to Dell w perry so i'm sitting at the park with my family and i have a 17 year old daughter daryl w perry and you're walking around in the ideal libertopia you guys all dream of to change the world, and you're not wearing any clothes. And you being a healthy, red-blooded male, find my daughter to be very attractive. And so that thing that Ellen isn't aware of, because she doesn't get it, that can happen to a guy in a nanosecond. <laughs> hang on, even... James. I don't know what you're getting at there. We'll hang on to James and bring him back here in a moment. This is Free Talk Live. Let him ask his question. You take control. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to MyMagicMud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin. MyMagicMud.com. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc. As in Creative Commons. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters? And sellers too. Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com. 
Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, dial toll-free, bring up whatever's on your mind. 855-450-FREE is the number, and that is brought to you by ProXPN. That's 855-450-3733, and you can join us via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. We, earlier in the show, we were talking about topless equality, and um, we actually have a, a call from James in Arizona that uh, was actually worth holding on to, I, I thought at least on this one. I don't know, Daryl, you may disagree, but... Uh, I think James is we'll, asking. We'll see where he goes. I think he's asking some interesting questions. Uh, he's certainly taking a position that is contrary to those of us on the show here tonight. And, you know, I don't mind a, a good uh, discussion. And I think that this may spark one uh, because, you know, all of us on the show think that people should be free to be topless if that's what they want to do. But James says hundreds of millions of Americans disagree with us and think that women should keep their tops on. Well, there are probably hundreds of millions of Americans that support dropping bombs on people in Iraq and Afghanistan and Yemen and Syria and probably want to do so in Iran. That doesn't make those people right. It just means that there's hundreds of millions of people that have an opinion. So let's get, uh, bring James back on the line. James, you were in the process of asking Daryl a question. Uh, can you just briefly recap what that question was because you didn't quite get through it? Well, if we were engaging, if I may, in the Aristotelian dialogue, Aristotle himself would tell Daryl W. Perry, he just switched the subject. It's called a non sequitur uh, when you go on about what other, uh, but I did cite that hundreds of millions of civilized human beings in the country that you live freely and speak freely on the public radios, thank God for the U.S. military, Daryl W. Perry, New Hampshire is never going to be invaded, by the way, if I may jump on what you just said about the military but don't worry about that you're free because of them in spite of what All you right. do, do you want to change the topic here them? james because i'd really prefer okay. you stick no, with your first topic i'm commenting on Dell w perry who should change the right. topic ian freeman go ahead would like to hear your question Thank for you. him now right in your ideal libertopia new hampshire i'm at a keen public park having a uh, lunch with my 17-year-old daughter and 16-year-old boy, let's just say. Uh, I want to ask Ellen this same thing. But Daryl W. Perry is expressing his freedom and not, war not wearing any clothes. And he gets what the Beavis and Butthead call a stiffy when he sees my daughter. What kind of parental rights do I have to do in response to a pig sporting wood in public because he's nude and expressing his freedom? <laughs> Well, for one, I wouldn't walk joke. around naked in it's public. It's not a joke. It's a just, serious question. It's just funny. because I think that you know somebody should have the right to do so doesn't mean that I would. And I want to okay, turn this around. Hold on, James. Somebody else named Daryl W. Perry. Hold on, James. I, I want to turn this around and ask you a question. 
you're, you're the one saying that humans must wear clothing. How much of the human body should be covered when that person goes in public? I'm uh, bringing you back. Go ahead, James. Daryl W. Perry just inverted the question, just like I suggested. The first thing out of my mouth is that you turned the dictum on its head, literally. Okay, I didn't say, uh, didn't talk about what you must wear, but I did say that women don't have the right to wear, go topless. What about a man? Does a man have a right to go topless? Okay, that's another Orwellian, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, gender equality? That's hilarious. Does a man have a right to go topless? Orwellian. On a beach, yep. And not in the courthouse where you guys have been a lot. What about or, walking uh, down the public street? Yeah. What? Wait, wait, wait. So a man deal. has the right to go topless. What about a woman? Or girl day sports would in public. When Hold I, on, James. I you're not. I'm not real clear on how you think on this. So you're saying a the man can walk is, down like, the public street topless, but a woman cannot. Why? And this this is a shock to you. Why? That's that. There's. They're not the same thing. That's why. Why? I'm what? what because a woman has more. Uh, she, she's women, got more. Because women are different than men. Okay, more size. women. Women don't grow facial uh-huh. beards. Does that mean that men have to cover their beards now or shave them? They're different. Okay, the subject, Ellen, and I may I respond to that in another way because I'm trying to get through to your. Uh, hoping that magical little light bulb in your head goes off. That it's yeah, we're totally going to become prudes street. because of what it's you say on the air. Go ahead. Down the street with no shirt on than when James the Wit does. Because a 16-year-old boy that I might have will sport wood if he finds you attractive. Well, I'll just walk away men, then. And they'll Google at Isn't you, this more of a... T- thank you, James, for the call tonight. I'm not tired of that. Now, isn't James really projecting here? I mean, isn't he really talking about himself? Because, I mean, if, if it's... Why would it be that if, if Ellen or any other lady were walking down the street, any other attractive lady were walking down the street topless... Why would that be more likely to make someone sport wood, as he is uh, talking about, as opposed to a woman wearing an attractive bikini or some sort of a form-fitting outfit? I mean, You're what? right. Sometimes uh, when, when people are slightly covered, the imagination takes hold. And Absolutely. You can think of yeah. you know, something better. than like if you, if you were to see naked women all the time, you'd become desensitized to it eventually. Yes. I, I remember when I was like 12 or 13, you know, going through that puberty stage mm. like looking at the sports illustrated swimsuit issue that was, was enough, enough to you. arouse me wow so you know like if it were something you know there, there are guys going through puberty i'm sure if they see somebody in yoga pants they might get a little aroused mm. so why is it really different of you know like not wearing a shirt versus wearing a very tight shirt to where you can see all of the anatomy. It's ridiculous uh, that you know, and his position. Of course, he wasn't answering the question very well about well, why is it okay for a man to walk down the street without his shirt on, but not a woman? Oh, well, women are different. Women are different. Well, what's so different about it? I've seen men with boobs. You know, <laughs> if you've got enough, if a man yeah. has enough weight on him, he will have the equivalent of breasts. So how is that different? He's got nipples. She's got nipples. Is and is that what the because uh, one's more attractive, right? It, it's well, all subjective. Wait, but aren't there? Uh, wait, so would would James say that uh, it, oh, ugly women should be able to walk around without their shirts on, but the women that James finds attractive should not be able to because he can't control himself? Or what about women that have no breasts or very small ones that aren't even noticeable? They look more like men. Honestly, I don't really want to know what James thinks about it. You know, like there's just so many different variations of this. I I don't see how any of this could be applicable. It, like, how are you supposed to restrict this? Especially since it's government not, violence, you know, right? Like, and- if I'm walking down the road naked, let's say, um, I'm not, you know, I'm not doing anything to anybody else. You know, I'm just being there. I'm just existing, yep. and um. You know, if, if anybody, you know, has a reaction to that, it's not it's really... It's all in their head. It's all their fault. Any uh, any sexual response to nudity has more to do with the person responding than the woman or man who happens to be nude. Right, and, because I'm not doing anything to cause that. Right. I'm, and, you know, if, I, my question still stands of if people are, you know, to be required by law to have on clothes, how much of the body must be covered? Can, can you cover everything except for the areola or, you know, like we we're talking about have this only earlier. the areola covered pasties on? Yeah. With the, with the, um, 
the nude uh, feminists in Paris, like how much of the breast is offensive? Is it just the, the nipple area or is it like if you can see the curvature? Uh, so uh, just a, uh, some interesting statistics here from YouGov.com. And this is from this year, the study they did. Now, it's not clear what the methodology was on this, but Daryl, you said you believe this YouGov site is legit. I believe uh, they are based on other polls that I have seen them do, and I've seen them cited by reputable places. The latest research from YouGov shows that most Americans, this is sad news, most Americans, 58% of them, support having different laws on toplessness for women and men, laws which almost always prohibit women from being topless in places where men are allowed to be topless. Support for having the same laws for women and men is, now this is interesting, is highest in the Northeast, where we live, where 40% of people support having the same laws compared to just 26% in the South. Interesting. Yeah, so a huge discrepancy there. But uh, maybe so, it's the uh, puritanical values of the South. No, in the the Northeast is where the Puritans lived, Ian. Yeah, but okay, but you're, then you're wrong because uh, the Northeast is where 40 percent of people support having the same laws compared to 26 percent in the South. So the South is more puritanical than the North on this. Do you follow? 40 percent. Of right. people in the Northeast. Was the last cup Whoa, of coffee we'll you be had back. really good? Free Talk Live has teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you the best of the best coffee. Shade grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is for every 10 people that get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. Get a free pound to try it out. A free pound of the best of the best coffee. Help others one cup at a time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Hi folks, Ronnie McMullen here for Life Change Tea. Healthcare is a problem, whether you're for or against Obamacare. It's a mess. My question is, who do you trust? Do you want to be told what to do, or do you want to make your own decision? My opinion, preventative maintenance. Keeping your colon clean is preventative maintenance. A little exercise, a balanced diet, and drinking Life Change Tea. It tastes great, and it helps with constipation, high cholesterol, liver problems, acid reflux, and much, much more. And with the holiday season upon us, you can get some extra tea for free. Don't wait for Obama. Make your own decision. Order now. Call us at 928-308-0408. That's 928-308-0408. Or you can log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. Ridding yourself of harmful toxins is truly preventative maintenance. GetTheTea.com. Keenvention is coming up October 31st through November 2nd. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, attend social events like the costume party. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, James Robin Hood Cleveland, Rich Paul, and Free State Project President Carla Garrick will be keynoting. And we'll have all kinds of panels, including the new Cop Block panel and the new Movers panel hosted by the outlaw Josie Wales. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. 
But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Thanks to Bitcoin, LRN.FM is able to provide our free-to-air satellite channel across North and Central America. You can listen to LRN.FM 24-7 via satellite for no monthly cost. Learn more about our satellite channel at sat.lrn.fm. And if you'd like to help us continue to expand, you can send us Bitcoins via the address you'll find under the Bitcoin graphic in the right column of LRN.FM. To learn more about Bitcoin, visit weusecoins.com. That's weusecoins.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything. The toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. There's still time for your call and thoughts if you dial in now. Toll-free 855-450-3733. Some more interesting numbers from this YouGov survey. We'll give you those in a moment about topless equality. What do Americans think? Uh, At least a 1,000 of the Americans that were surveyed by YouGov.com. We'll get into that here in moments. First, back to your calls and thoughts. Think Fish is with us in Atlanta. You're on Free Talk Live. Think Fish. Good evening. Uh, my first comment is for James. Uh, really, a 16-year-old boy, all they need is a pulse to sport wood. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if anyone's uh, naked or not. It, all they need is an imagination and a heartbeat. But I don't understand why this has to be an either-or issue. I think it's a matter of uh, whether it's appropriate or not. Would you want teachers in school to be able to teach topless? No, it's not appropriate. But if you're consenting adults in, say, a nightclub specifically for that, I don't see a problem for that. They have smoking and non-smoking sections in restaurants. Why can't they well, do the same thing? I mean, it doesn't have to be private property. No, you, can't do it. you know, private property. You can set whatever rules you want, obviously, for people. But the Correct. the question for me is really about in public. You know, walking down the street, for instance, uh, being at the beach, at a swimming pool. But I, I just think most importantly, walking down the street. If I want to go somewhere from point A to point B, I have to generally go on some sort of public street. Why should I have to put on a T-shirt? Most of most people wouldn't be upset because I'm a man, according to these results. But well, women, the businesses that you're going to go into for the most part, are going to have signs that say no shirt, no shoes, no No service. service. That's correct. And so I'm fine with private property rules, but if I just, what if I want to walk to the park? Yeah, and you know, in the summertime, I see men walking around without shirts on all the time, and I'm pretty jealous of that because it's, you know, it's hot out. Nobody wants to be wearing clothing. So what do you think, Think Fish? Well, I mean, as far as men walking around, I don't walk around without a shirt because, quite frankly, my rack would be the envy of most women. (laughs) Okay. Um, See, there's that too. But, there's also personal limitations. Not everyone's going to choose but, to do it. Right. But I think sometimes it's in a pro- in areas you would have. I mean, if you have families, I don't think young children should be exposed to that. But to I also men think with their sh- with, well, just to clear, just to clarify what you're saying, you don't think children should be exposed to men topless? No. Interesting. So, uh, do do you think that uh, the male body is disgusting? <laughs> Well, I guess that's your opinion. Here, no, here. Now, let's clarify something else. Would you make it illegal, or are you just sharing your opinion about the male body? I, I'm just making it my opinion. I would never infringe on someone to uh, show their disgusting body, but I think there's a time and a place for things. Fair enough. And I don't think, I don't think you, it has to be an either or. I think there's room for compromise i mean sometimes it's appropriate sometimes it's not good call thank fish thanks for the call i appreciate hearing from you tonight and uh, yeah according to this you gov survey americans think that it's appropriate in different places uh, so for instance uh being at the beach or at a swimming pool you americans may be more likely to support toplessness in places like that as opposed to uh, inside a fast food <laughs> restaurant <laughs> Uh, for instance, Ew. I wouldn't so, even Walmart. want to be. No, no. the topless people no. of Walmart. That needs to be a website <laughs> or in a public transport. So like on the city bus. Now, just a quick summary here of some of the results uh, from YouGov.com. And I'll post- yeah, and read those again, because I was kind of confused about some of the numbers you yeah, were okay. reading. So. Uh, so they, they broke this down in a lot of different ways, and it's an interesting survey, and I'll post the full 
link here and you can dig through the 15 pages of, uh, of data uh, and kind of absorb this. But the basic info here is that most Americans, 58%, support having different laws on toplessness for women and men. Uh, laws which almost always prohibit women from being topless in places where men are allowed to be topless. Support for having the same laws for women and men is, interestingly, highest in the Northeast, meaning that there would be no discrepancy between being a man and a woman. Now, that doesn't say that the laws would allow for toplessness in the Northeast. It just says that the people in the Northeast say the laws should be the same. Whatever the laws right, are right. should be the same. Whereas in the South, 26% say that the laws should be the See, same. See, and what threw me off when you were reading these numbers mm -hmm. was the initial way you read the number it made it sound like you were reading the percentages of people that thought that the law should be different right now i was reading the number for the people that think it should be the same at least the second two numbers the first number 58 percent right. are the ones that do support it. right and the way most good survey people put their surveys out is they make sure that they report the same thing consistently mm -hmm. so that you know Every percentage you see is going to be for whatever the first thing that they say. So in this case, 58% say that there should be a different law. Now, uh, perhaps unsurprisingly, says the sur survey summary, that men are much more supportive of women going topless in public. Of course they are. Than women are. 54% of men say they think it's acceptable for a woman to go topless on the beach compared to only 25% of women. Women overwhelmingly think that it is unacceptable for them to go topless at the beach or swimming pool, while men tend to say they would be more than happy with that. Men are uh, men are women. I think they mean men or women are most likely to agree. Men and women, rather, are most likely to or more likely to agree when it comes to other places, however, with most men and women disapproving of toplessness at parks, gyms, fast food joints, and on public transport. Though even at these places, men tend to be far more forgiving of female toplessness. So let, let me speculate as to why I think fewer women support women being topless Jealousy. at the beach. Yeah, can you Jealousy. please? Because I am personally offended that so many people are against you know people making choices about what they wear. You don't want yeah, your boyfriend ogling all those other attractive women that aren't wearing tops? <laughs> what, what am I going to do about it? He does it anyway. <laughs> but there are a lot of women who would come out from that perspective, don't right. you think? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure they would. But I mean, that doesn't jealousy is not just grounds for you know making laws and controlling other people. Mm. Like if if that were the case, then you would you know make every other pretty girl that you're jealous of stay home all the time. Burkas, mandatory burkas, <laughs> not allowed for to drive. Everyone, no, Men, I just find women, it offensive children. because. Nobody chose to be born with the body that they have. I mean, yes, there's choices they make that make them look better or worse depending on their diet, what they, the you know, grooming habits, that kind of thing. But it's not like I didn't choose to be born a woman with breasts. Like that just happened to me. And the fact that everybody's telling me, well, you can't, you have to wear clothes now because you know, because somebody we're might sorry. sport yeah. wood. It's, Some 16-year-old. We know it's not your fault, but uh, you're special, so you don't get the same rights as, as the other gender does. So there's more interesting, when you actually open this survey up, you look at the 15 pages uh, here, it's interesting data. Uh, you just skip ahead to uh, the ninth page, topless women on the beach question was, do you think it's acceptable or unacceptable for a woman to be topless in the following locations? And when you look at the numbers here, 54% of males say it is acceptable. 25% of females say it is acceptable. Uh, but when you break down by age, things get interesting. 18 to 29-year-olds, so millennials basically, 52% say it's acceptable. Uh, so that's men and women. And then you go down or you go up in the age category, 30 to 44, people at that age range, 46% say it's acceptable. 35% for 40, age 45 to 64 say it is acceptable for a woman to be topless at the beach. And then people over the age of 65, 21% say that it is acceptable for a woman to be topless at the beach. So it certainly seems like millennials, the younger generations, are more accepting of topless equality. Do you think that the millennials who are currently in support of topless equality, will they become prudish old people in tw in 40 years? Probably, because... <laughs> Yeah, you know, like most of the time when people are picturing in their mind, like, you know, who they're most likely to see 
topless, wherever. The older people are probably thinking, like, I'm going to see other old people, and I just don't Do want to see that's that now. The case? Whereas the young people, they're like, yeah, like, I want to see all these college chicks walking around mm. topless all the time. Well, I, I don't know. Maybe you could claim it's something to do with age granting wisdom onto people and being like, well, you know, all these naked people is really distracting. Maybe it's better, you know, we'll be more civilized and focused if we all wear clothing. And, you know, maybe it does have something but to do with the hormonal l- youth. Look at a lot of but- the Mediterranean areas of Europe where it's totally acceptable <laughs> to walk around on the beach topless. Right, and both men and women do that. Actually, yes. topless and bottomless. No, it's There's interesting. Somebody, a famous guy on a beach in France that I went to, named the elephant for obvious reasons. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, one more detail here from this study: you go to the topless men page, big changes in the numbers, right? So, ninety-one percent say that's acceptable across the board for a man to be topless. But when you look at the ages. 65 plus, 100% of them say it's acceptable for a man to be topless at the beach, but 18 to 29 year olds, only 83% say. They that probably it's misunderstood the question. I don't know. It's also it just goes down in age. So 45 to 64, it's 93%. 30 to 44, 91%. And then 18 to 29, it's 83%. We'll see you tomorrow night. Freetalklive.com. Are you? F- Florida officials announced today its plan to experiment with new 600 lever voting machines. The machine operates through a very straightforward process that we think is going to give Floridians the peace of mind that their votes will be counted. The voter turns on the machine using these 30 levers at the top and uh, then enters their names and social security numbers using the alphanumeric levers near the bottom here. Right about now, the voter is going to have to find the two levers on the machine that are exactly identical and pull them at the same time. Then they're going to have to... The new 22-foot-tall steam-powered machines, which officials are hailing as, quote, the future of voting, each feature over 45 separate panels of levers, along with an intricate series of valves, knobs, cranks, and pumps, all designed to streamline the electoral process. Now, some of this may seem confusing, but every voter will be given a comprehensive 2,200-page manual when they enter their precinct that will explain exactly what to do. This is the Onion News Network. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. The Corey Moore Show is coming up next, live after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, October 31st, 2014. Silver is trading at $16.52 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,202 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $347. Antiwar.com reports a U.S. drone strike leveled a home in the village of Nargasi in South Waziristan, killing six people within, including one who officials identified as a Haqqani network leader. None of the other slain have been identified specifically, though Pakistani officials labeled the rest as militants, including four foreigners. Two were said to be from Saudi Arabia. The attack is the 16th U.S. drone strike against Pakistan's tribal area this year, and while Pakistani officials were previously mobbed on the latest increases in the strikes, the foreign ministry yesterday offered a criticism, pointing out that the Pakistani military is already taking actions against the militants in those agencies. Tasneem Aslam, the spokeswoman for the foreign ministry, said that the attacks were unnecessary and needed to be stopped, which is still well short of the demands to end such attacks which Pakistani officials were making at the start of the year. 
Still, that comments are being made at all suggests that they are once again aware of the risk to unrest allowing the U.S. to continue the wildly unpopular drone campaign. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. Reuters reports Ukraine, Russia, and the European Union signed a deal on Thursday that will see Moscow resume vital supplies of gas to its ex-Soviet neighbor over the winter in return for payments funded in part by Kiev's Western creditors. After several failed rounds of talks in recent weeks as conflict rumbles on, despite a ceasefire with rebels in eastern Ukraine, the accord also eases concerns that the new gas war could disrupt winter supplies if energy to EU states, notably through pipelines shut down across Ukraine since June. EU Energy Commissioner Gunther Oettinger said he saw in the agreement a first glimmer of detente between Moscow and Kiev in a conflict that has plunged east-west relations into a chill not seen since the Cold War. Worth $4.6 billion in total, the package calls for Ukraine to pay $3.1 billion by the end of the year to cover debts for previous supplies from Russia's Gazprom, and Kiev will have $1.5 billion some from existing accords with the EU and IMF to pay for about 4 billion cubic meters of new gas until March, for which Russia is insisting on the cash up front. You can support FPP Radio by shopping online. Whether you're looking for t-shirts, precious metals, bitcoins, or books, you'll find that and more at shop.fppradio.com. Every purchase you make from one of my affiliates at shop.fppradio.com helps fund FPP Radio. That's shop.fppradio.com. The Associated Press reports a prisoner whose confession helped free a death row inmate in a case that was instrumental in ending capital punishment in Illinois was released on Thursday after he recanted and a prosecutor said there was powerful evidence that the other man was responsible. Al Story Simon's confession gained international attention in 1999 largely because of an investigation by a journalism professor and a team of students from Northwestern University that helped secure Anthony Porter's release just days before he was to be executed. He had spent 16 years on death row for slayings he and his supporters maintained he did not commit. Because of constitutional protections against double jeopardy, there is no legal way to retry Porter. Simon, wearing a gray hoodie and jeans, told reporters outside Jacksonville Correctional Center that he was angry. He was crying as he told reporters, I'm not angry at the system, I'm angry at the people who did what they did to me. He said that his mother died while he was behind bars. Simon was convicted and sentenced to 37 years in prison, but the state attorney's office for Cook County began re-examining his conviction last year after his attorney presented evidence that he had been threatened with the death penalty and coerced into confessing with promises that he would get an early release and share in the profits from books and movie deals. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Joe Chris Beckman. From claim jumpers to politicians to coyotes, the straight shooter that shook up the presidential race is taking them all on and licking them good. Hello, Joe. Who and what's behind these potato monkey shines? Well, these scientists are trying to mass produce potatoes that are more resistant to disease, but they're doing so in potentially dangerous ways that alter their DNA. Tater disease, and what brung us Irish? Right. You give a tater man's constitution, you can bet he's coming to play old Joe to call. Yes, well, nature's revenge could come in the form of disease. Now you or to me, taters. You got gave a mind of a tater. Joe, please, l l let me make my point. You're tater minded and you're looking to infiltrate old Joe's cabin, but you're too late. No. Now you get out or I right, slice your tater heart out and fry it up on my okay, grill. Okay, Joe. Now you all stay close. You're going to have my jug band back here and the Jasper don't let me strum the worst part. We're going to resort to cutting. This is the Onion News Network.
is The Corey Moore Show. And welcome to another live edition of The Corey Moore Show. It is October the 31st, 2014, Halloween. Yes, indeed it is. You can listen to us live right now over at CoreyMooreShow.com slash live. I got Will Coley with me tonight. He is the National Director of Muslims for Liberty. You can find them at Muslims, the number four, liberty.org. Brian Hagan is out tonight because he is apparently a uh, doing a parade for a bunch of rednecks. So I figured I'd bring another redneck on tonight to replace him. Welcome to the show, Will. Howdy. All right. We got a lot to talk about tonight. A uh, lot of interesting news coming out about Halloween. Uh, you you alerted me to this. Um, there was this <laughs> display out in a Kentucky Army base that people are freaking out about because it looks like lynching. It looks like a black family being hung from trees. Um, there's three people being hung from the tree with a child hanging off of the legs. Now, this is this is the media narrative of what's going on. And uh, if I would have read the story, I would have probably thought the same thing because that's what it looks like. It looks like uh, three black people being hung from trees. But, well, you told me otherwise. And after doing a bit of research, I, I have to tend to agree with you. So what's going on with this? Why, why would anyone ha- do this display, especially on an army base in the South? I mean, you think that's highly insensitive, right? Well, I mean... I mean, if you've never raked leaves before, then maybe you would, wouldn't would know. But, I mean, if you've got a yard and a tree in it and you've ever raked leaves, you know that the white garbage bags are the ones that are usually for the house. They're kind of thin. So if you put leaves in those and stuff, they tear. So, like, when we used to do Halloween displays, we'd make a big spider in the front yard. And we would fill a black plastic garbage bag, a thick leaf bag. And then make it tight to give it a form like these things. And then put legs on it and it would be a spider. And nobody called it, you know, racist spider. You know, it's a black garbage bag. And if you look at the picture um, and actually listen to what the person who put the display up specifically said, it's from a movie called Sinister. And if you look at the scene um, from the movie, if you watch the movie or you check out a still frame from the movie, the scene that's in this uh, Halloween display is exactly the same as the one in the movie, complete with child holding the father's legs, um, trying to pull him out of the tree. So, and this isn't even the only one. Um, there's another story that came out um, recently. Uh, it came well, it came out today. Uh, this one was in Min- Minneapolis. And it was the same scene in a tree. Um, but the guy's name who put it up is Vu because they're uh, Vietnamese immigrants. Yeah. So, but again, it's the same accusation of uh, simulated, uh, simulated lynchings. Um, I don't know of any Vietnamese people that were involved in the lynchings in the 40s and the 50s in the U.S. or in the you know, the early 20th and late 19th centuries, you know, like it's just, it's really kind of grabbing at straws. You know, like I said, I'm waiting for them to rewrite the Lego song. Everything is awesome. And you're like, everything is racist. Cause that's, that's kind of the world that we live in today. Like when I see this and I see lefties doing this, I see the same reaction that you get from right wingers who are always looking for jihadist under the bed. Yeah. It's the same exact mentality. You're looking for something 24 hours a day to be offended by. Well, you know, and that that's I guess that's the interesting thing here, because I mean, OK, first of all, I, I could totally understand seeing that display. And if you were not aware of the movie, I wasn't until, you know, you sent me this though. I think, wow, that's awfully, you know, it might shock you a little bit, you know, um, in general. I, I've always those kind of displays have kind of shocked me in general. Um now, just because they use black trash bags, that's the interesting part right there. Like, it, it, like you said, what if they use white trash bags? Would that would that um, convey the same response? And probably not, uh, yeah. especially. Well, that- but I think it is especially sensitive because it is in the South, and there's still that perception, right, that people in the South are racist. 
when I, I've heard that seems to be the opposite now, but that seems to be the perception that a lot of people have. Yeah, well, I, I can give you a good case in point. I grew up in Appalachia in eastern Tennessee, and um, I lived in a, a, a foster home in a place called Ironsburg, which is about six miles from the Carolina-Tennessee state line. I mean, you're, we're way up in the mountains. And you used to see Klan t-shirts at high schools, like the original Boys in the Hood and stuff like that, on t-shirts at a public high school, and nobody batted an eye. Like, they literally would not send minority kids to foster homes in this area. Now that same town hosts the largest Muslim retreat of the year in the South. Same exact town that 10 years ago, a black person was afraid to go there in the daytime. And now you've got people from the global community, black, red, you know, Asian, Filipino, white, all Muslim and dressed in Muslim attire, going to this huge religious fest, uh, like uh, retreat for five days in the, in the same exact town now. So, I mean, things have changed a lot in the last 15 years. I mean, like, it's like two different planets in the last 15, decade and a half. Yeah, there, there has been a lot of change with, when it comes to that. I mean, I, things in general have changed a lot in the past 30 years. Um, and it really has just spread spread very far. Um, the <laughs> amount of the amount of, of of overt racism is very very small comparatively. And it, it's interesting that you know I, I'm generally actually the one that likes to talk about race issues because I do think there is there is probably more racism in society than perhaps you might you might agree That's with hard. me about. But you know, it seems like they always grasp at the nonsense rather than what's really real legitimate racism, right? Yeah. Well, that's that's one of the things that's that's going on is uh, I mean, even you hear stand up comics say like, you know, when I saw, you know, I, I had a Muslim buddy and I was sitting on the couch and 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 nine and nine eleven happened. And, uh, you know, I just sat back and looked over at my buddy and was like, huh, huh, y'all are the new niggas now, you know, and that's <laughs> the that's the way that it is. I mean, that's the truth is that the 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 the, the immigrant community are now the de facto target. The uh, the Muslim community are now the de facto targets. Absolutely, and that's that's the unfortunate reality of it. And it's not just Muslims; it's the it, it is the the Mexicans, the Latinos, um, and you know anyone that has that looks a little bit different. Um, and they 